come down. Yeah, I already did. Yeah. Do you know? There's more. There's more about dogs than there is the budget. Doesn't that just frustrate? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're alive. It's two, three. Well, I got it muted. Yeah, on Facebook. <laughs> Is it what? Oh, yeah. I have no heart. Just a friendly reminder to everybody, please mute your phones. Yes, Might need a captain about a half an hour. <laughs> oh, my mic's on. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> You'll probably see that today anyway. Oh, left hand. Yeah. Normally, it's. Well, thank you for that. Could mm. be in the line of fire. All righty. Oh, okay. shoot. I have a... What do you need? No, I need to get approved. <laughs> yeah, I did. Oh, yeah, good group. I... Also, the wrong subject. Yeah, probably. Isn't that nice? Mm hmm. Yes. Yeah, it thank is. you. She said it's good. Mary said they thank you. Really? Got it in wow. 66. Races, that yeah. sounds cold, but well, I'm not cold. Those. I always have they get the new lights, we'll just take four. all the pictures. Okay. Thanks. All right. Well, let's get this started. We ready, Bill? Before you get out the door. <laughs> I'm gonna Ready? Okay. Good morning, everybody. I want to call to order the uh, board meeting for January 16th, 2023 at 930 here in Mark's Hall. Uh, Russell, will you lead us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation, please? Lord, we give you thanks today for our presence here at this meeting. Please be with us, guide us, and help us as we are conducting business for our park. Lord, also, if you could bring back the Florida weather. <laughs> we're, we're beginning to feel this effect on this. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America 
and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Just an extra second. All right. I my sound. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, could I have the roll call, please? Sure, Mary Chandler. Here. Lori Dalton, here. Kathy Gregory. Here. Todd Lombardi. Present. Russell McAllister. Here. Louis Nichols. Here. Sandra Simonich. Here. Rodney Smith. Here. Dwayne Trotter. Here. Okay, could I start off with resident comments, please? Either one. Good morning. Officer 6819. Mike. Thank you for the call. Uh, I'm here to ask why your survey form in Trailer Estates Tribune was addressed to renters. This should be property owners only. Also, it should have had a line provided for signatures. To my knowledge, renters pay no taxes for park projects. Also, what was the amount quoted for the marine repair? And also, how much is our loan for and at what rate? Thank you. Thank you. Do I have any other resident comments? Gordon Elton, 1804 Ohio Avenue. Had a couple of comments on things on your uh, agenda. The PP27, the owner information form is on your uh, agenda. And uh, if I understand the information right, it's asking to make it a, a annual form. Back when I was on the board, we had a discussion and that was already indicated as an annual requirement. So if it's just adding the words to the form, because it doesn't seem like that's a change in policy. Um, the other thing that is on the agenda or another thing is uh, the PP40 update about the, um, <clears throat> the, excuse me, the emotional support animals. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe the action requested is to adopt that revised policy, but the policy as revised isn't attached, just an attachment. I think it's advisable for you to have the actual document so the public can see what the document is that you're adopting, even though it's been talked about at previous uh, meetings. The attachment, at least the attachment that's online, is only the attorney's recommended changes, from what I understand. And the uh, other item on the workshop is about the a hiring of instructors and the description of the duties of the health and welfare trustee. And I'm not sure what the intent of that is, because it doesn't really say, but it seems like uh, back uh, approximately a year ago, the duties were assigned to the health and welfare trustee. And it's on the job description for the health and welfare trustee. So it looks like PP13 simply didn't get updated at that time. But I know at that time, the intent was for those duties to be part of the health and welfare trustees duties. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Dottie Deerwester, 1804, Ohio. I want to compliment the organizers of the activity fair that we had on Saturday, Britta and Peg. They did a marvelous job putting that together. It was well organized. There were a lot of clubs attending uh, who attended, had booths. There was information. I even got to play hand and foot a little bit. And I, I just think that was a wonderful way to expose the different clubs, different activities, and to have the uh, residents interact with each other. So I wanted to put a, um, a kudos to them for doing that. 
and hopefully we'll do it again next year. Thank you. Hurry, Gail. <laughs> I can't talk now because I ran. <laughs> Good morning. I want to support what Dottie just said. I thought it was a fantastic um, affair, um, but sadly, there was a problem for me there. Some groups like mine were seated in squares. Name. Can, can you? Oh, I don't have one. No. <laughs> Gail Opper, 1915, Minnesota. I'm sorry. As I began setting up, I could not believe who was standing just five feet from me at the back of the square. It was the person who, along with her sister, sued this park a few years ago. Anger came flooding back to me as I was reminded of the 153 false allegations lodged against us, the request made for $6 million from Trailer State's owners, and the stress created for wonderful, dedicated board members <clears throat> like you. Well, all that bothered me. Nothing bothered me more than seeing her giggling and enjoying the very place she nearly destroyed. All the while still owing us a court judgment must be now nearly $100,000. And to my knowledge, she has not paid one set, cent. She no longer lives in the park, but shows up as a presenter at the fair knowing the money she owes. Who does that? I let the committee know that I would be confronting her at the end of the fair. They asked if I'd move to another table. Absolutely not. My anger was righteous and well-deserved. In the end, she left the fair. In the lawsuit, I personally had 12 unfounded accusations against me, all immediately dismissed by the judge. Several on the board stood to lose everything they had worked a lifetime for. One suffered health problems. Worst of all, trailer states may not be here today if we had lost that lawsuit. The perpetrator's presence and attitude at the fair was a slap in the face to every person who battled that lawsuit and every owner who loves this park. Board members, it's time we collect on this debt. There were reasons why we could not collect the money in the past, but only one reason remains, and I believe that has been lifted. It would take almost no effort to check and keep checking. This park should never be a doormat for anyone, <clears throat> nor should it look the other way at one who's breaking the law. You are presently working to levy fines in the park. I fully support that, but we should all have learned something from the law Saturday that the law doesn't mean a thing to some. Thank you. Do I have any other resident comments? Do I have anybody on Zoom that would Hello? like to make a comment? Hello? Hello? Hello, this is Julie Hulk. Now, Julie, go ahead. 1711 Illinois Avenue. <laughs> I'm just calling about um, the doors being locked when there's an event going on. You know, there's uh, handicapped parking by all four doors. It's kind of frustrating when you park in a handicap and you go up to the door and it's locked. Um, was told at the uh, church memorial yesterday that we used the wrong door. So I, I just don't understand why doors are locked when there's an event going on. Uh, I just don't understand it. I'd like to know if there's a problem or if this is a new thing or, or what's going on. It's, it's not nice to go to an event and have the door locked. That's it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Do I have any other resident comments? Hearing none, I'm going to close resident comments. Uh, I'd like to have uh, the trustees respond to those resident comments. Uh, who would like to see the... Dwayne, I'm talking about the survey. Okay. okay. Uh, Pat, on the survey, it was, it was addressed to <laughs> residents 
owners and renters because renters do that they do receive a FOB if they are up to date with their records and they do participate in our activities. That's why they were included on the survey. That was good for that. How do you want to respond on the uh, marina? Um, <clears throat> I don't have the numbers exactly in front of me, but it was uh, roughly a million three. Um, and the loan was for a million and a half. Yeah. Or, mm -hmm. And then there was a lot of expenses as far as legal expenses and all that. I don't, I don't have the total numbers that uh, it, it's actually costing us. Do you have the interest rate, Mary? I don't off the top of my head. No, it's been a while. But you're right, it was a $1.3 million mm -hmm. project. We borrowed 1.5, so we had enough money to cover the legal cost of acquiring right. the debt. And uh, would either one of you call Pat and let her know what the interest rate was uh, in the actual figures? Yeah. Uh, the PP27 and PP40 from uh, Gordon. Uh, I think there was other changes in the PP27, I'm not sure, other than just not changing it from annual. I, I, I disagree. I think all it was was adding the words annual. Was it? We had an annual in the heading and, and the lineup at the top that said to be completed annually or some such to that effect. I don't have it right here. Um, but that's all we that's all we were doing. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. that was that all was we it. added the word annually and to be completed annually. That's the only thing that changed. And okay. the other thing I thought we discussed was so this, this was going to be mandatory before you got your FOB. That that was a decision that we were going to make that you so that we weren't this, going to that's a process that that we're going to require this before we renew the FOB, but that's in the office because now we've said it's annually. Now in the office, they can ask for it. Okay. Before mm -hmm. they do the FOB. So yeah, we're going to do that part, but that's not part of the document. Okay. And then uh, on PP40, uh, I'm sorry that the rest of the document didn't get onto the website, but I do have those. I'll will have those available in the office for everybody mm -hmm. to take a look at. Uh, the activity period. The uh, the other one, they were hiring of the instructors. Uh, that will be in the workshop items there. I I know those are uh, in the position descriptions of each one of the trustees or of the affected trustee, uh, but there are uh, some comments that we want to take a look at. Mm -hmm. And then I also have one on there for the uh, total trustees position description to see how we can rearrange some of the workload. So those will be brought up during the uh, mm -hmm. workshop itself. Mm -hmm. Can, Go ahead. Can I can I ask when was the last time we did any sort of follow up on trying to collect on the unpaid debt that Gail referred to? That I can't. Answer. I've got to connect with Gail to find out what she uh, the information she had about what something has changed, so we might have a window to go out. But right now, all of their assets are in their husbands' names, and so unless one of them passes away, we can't. We can't get any money. Okay. Um, the only thing we can do, okay, and I'll add that to the workshop if you want, is we can get legal counsel to put a, um, a file something with the credit bureau. It's an unpaid debt, just like any other unpaid debt. If we can have it on their credit report, if they go to acquire financing, it's going to show that's an unpaid debt. I, we have I, not done that. We might as well do everything we can. Okay. I mean, that's my opinion, and I'm just one of nine. Yeah. So let, if there's any opposing opinions to that, but yeah. That's so, the only thing that I've come up with that we could do to. 
So you will get with Gail then I to see what we've yep. got. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm not quite sure what Julie was talking about on the uh, doors being locked in a wet function. I, I do. Okay. All right. Um, hang on. Let me finish my notes on this because I can't, I can't write and talk. All right. Um, yesterday, the, the park memorial, the doors were locked. And I called Todd and asked him to unlock, to disable the fobs on the fly. So yesterday, and then when I got to thinking about it, I thought, wait a second, it's the park memorial. You're supposed to have your fob dinner into mm -hmm. the building. So why doesn't everybody have their fob? Now, that would simply be a wipe the fob, get in. All right, let's go back to, um, I don't remember exactly what it was, but there was some function that was ticketed, a ticket, oh, let's go mm -hmm. Christmas dinner. Mm -hmm. You had to have tickets to get in for the Christmas dinner. So we had to force the people to come in through the two doors up towards the stage at the mm -hmm. north end of the hall mm -hmm. so we could collect tickets. So we had the back doors locked. Mm -hmm. So if you were handicapped and you parked here by this mm -hmm. back door and you tried to come in on the south end of this large hall, you couldn't get in. We had that door locked because we were forcing you to go to the front door um, to be able to collect tickets. And I understand her frustration. And that's something that we talked about repainting the handicap spaces and stuff. Um, that all the handicap, a lot of the handicap spaces are down here by the end that doesn't have the power door versus, mm -hmm. and, and so it's, and I understand the frustration and, and, and I know that there was an event um, and, and, and Pat, do you mind if I pick on you? Pat, Pat parked where she's supposed to down here and was locked out of the event. I don't remember what the event was, but she was locked out at this end because they needed tickets. And so she had to struggle to the other end of the parking lot to come into the door because she couldn't enter through a door that and so something's got to give with how we how we do that mm -hmm. because for me when when I was up and walking the wheelchair's a struggle enough but when I was up and walking there's no way I would have made it from my mm -hmm. car coming up to this door being rejected and then being able to walk all the way down to the other door and get in and get into a chair where I could rest. Mm -hmm. um, and so I understand that struggle. And so that's, that's what I believe Julie's referring to. Um, the park memorial, everybody should have had their fob. I'm sorry, but there's other events that that is most definitely pertinent to. Yes. Did I, did I catch it, Julie? The only thing that I we think. could do is when we have events we um that require tickets or something that we have to have someone manning both doors, mm -hmm. the front and the back, yeah. which means more volunteers. We could uh, yeah, because that the south door has the power has the has the um handicap power button. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this door has the handicap parking. Right. right. So wasn't the park memorial uh open to the public? It, 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 it so could, it could have, been, be should have been when you turn in your paperwork for the park memorial for for next year, make sure that you put disable the fobs and the times that you want them disabled. Mm -hmm. And but it I I can kind of defend the park memorial because the doors weren't locked. You just had to have a fob to get in. Yeah. When you, the ticketed events, the door handles are yeah. not mm -hmm. dogged down. So you cannot get in with the fob. Right. You, we, it's forcing you to go uh, into a certain door mm -hmm. because of tickets. And so that's, that's what I see as a bigger issue than the park memorial. Mm -hmm. The park memorial was just a frustration yesterday. The door should have been open. We, we, I got that fixed as soon as I realized mm -hmm. it was happening. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Bill. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's move on to the approval of minutes. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes of January 2nd, 2023 for the organizational board meeting? 
So moved. <clears throat> second. Oh, hang on a second. Sorry, I'm behind. Todd and Lewis. Or was uh, that Rod? Rod. Rod? Sorry. Are there any corrections to those minutes? I have a correction. Already. What is it? Um, under the appointments, um, Tim Gregory was appointed storage lot manager. It's not on here. Uh, Oh, I didn't even put it on there at all. Right, it's not on there at all. Gotcha. Okay, I'm with you. I didn't get the wrong name. I just didn't do it at all. George Lot Manager and the name again, sorry. Tim Gregory. Tim Gregory. Okay. Are there any other corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes as corrected, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion is passed. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the January 2nd, 2023 board meeting? I move. Second. Second. Are there any corrections to those minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes as read, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion is passed. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the January 2nd, 2023 board meeting workshop? I'll um, make a motion. I'll second. Are there any questions to those minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion is passed. Could we have the uh, report of the treasurer, please? Yes. As of today, the checking account balance is cents. The district money market balance, one million two hundred and twenty eight thousand two hundred and twenty three dollars and fourteen cents. The seawall improvement project, five hundred and seventy three thousand six hundred and eighty dollars and forty one cents. And the uncommitted fund balance, two hundred and sixty eight thousand four hundred and forty dollars and eighty three cents. Is there a motion to approve the treasurer's report? So move. Second. Second. All right. I'm sorry. Whose voice said? Uh, so move. And the motion. Louis. Okay. And then who was the second? I heard Todd first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any discussion about the treasurer's report? All those in favor of approving the treasurer's report is read. Please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Report passed. Uh, do we have any approval of bills? Yes, we have one. I have a Blaylock Walters bill for $597.50. And this is related to the um, transfer of a second property associated with uh, 6831 American Way that didn't get transferred when we did the original deed in July. I'll second your motion. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the uh, bill as read, please say aye. 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 Those against, please say nay. Hey. Yep. If we don't have any staff attorney or trustee comments, let's go right into the informational report from the trustees. Kathy, do you want to start off? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, since last meeting, the following events have occurred. I want to thank everybody for coming out to help us take down and store all the Christmas decorations. Um, a lot of people showed up, and it made maintenance job much easier, so thank you all. On Thursday, January 5th, Bear Plowman was here entertaining at our first showtime. 
At the door, we accepted $300 in donations. On Saturday, on, on January 7th, we had our sock hop. Rod Green, who's our resident here, was our DJ. At the door, we collected $332, and the 50-50 take for the park was $143. We had our movie night um, on January 12th. It was very well attended. It was kind of scary how many people showed up. Um, about 80 plus people were there. Um, it was wonderful. And a lot of money and then food came in for the food bank. So thank you very much for doing that. It was wonderful. And last Saturday on the 14th, um, Soundwave Sarasota was here entertaining. The door take was $560.50. 50-50 take for the district was 130. So, so far for the dances, from November 12th through January 14th, the contracts equaled $3,000. The door take was $3,257.50. So right now we're a little bit ahead of schedule. So looking ahead, this has caused a lot of confusion. So I'm gonna clarify what's happening Saturday night. There is no dance, okay? It's our first showtime on Saturday night, the first. The Atlantic City Boys will be here entertaining. Um, it's from 7 to 8.30. We will have uh, tables and chairs set up, so please feel free to bring your own favorite refreshments. We'll have popcorn and pretzels out for light snacks. You can bring your own stuff. I don't care what you bring, as long as it's legal. And this is for Trailer Estates residents. So if you have friends that want to come, I'm sorry, they cannot come. This is a showtime event. It's only for our folks here. And it should be a really fun night. If you want to come early, reserve your table. That's fine. And then next Saturday, the 28th, we'll have a dance again. And Taylor Taylor will be entertaining. There was some confusion about the movie license. So I'm going to explain again about why I cannot use social media or bulletin boards to advertise the name of the movie. It violates the license, and that's why we cannot do that. This is why we use 732, and I use bulletin boards that require a fob. That's the activity center and the laundromat. Not trying to make things difficult. It's just how it is. And it's only for trailer estates residents. The outside public cannot come because, again, it violates the license. That's just how we have to do it. Um, when it comes to activity planning, if any of you are interested in helping me plan next season, because I'm already beginning to plan for next season, let me know. We'll have a, a group of people getting together to help me plan, hopefully sometime this, this month. Now. If you don't mind me doing a little bit of show and tell, and I'll explain why I'm doing this in just a moment. Hopefully I don't disconnect myself here. Um, I've been asked to talk about a few things that typically I don't talk about, but because I was in a situation, because I was just there, a few things happened a few weeks ago involving the use of Mark's Hall and the large hall. So in case you don't know, the large hall is like a continual durable wheel. It keeps going. And if you spend any time in the large hall during season, which we are now smack dab in, it's a constant takedown setup. And it, I mean, it's all day and all night. But there's a, there's a method that everybody has to follow or what happened the first week of January will happen again. So this is the Trailer Estates mm. website in case you've never been in before. And thank you, Larry Stone, for this lovely picture. Um, if you've never seen the website, this is the, the, the page of our website. Now, under activities is the calendar. This is, this is where everything is on trailer estates. Now, if, if you see all this, this means that someone, a group, a resident, someone from the park filled out what's called a PP37. It's a magical document. 
it's fillable on the trailer estates website or you can go to the office and request one from TJ or Joyce. All of these things you see have occurred by filling out PP37. It's very simple to do. And I'm gonna highlight how things should be done. So I'm gonna pick on Computer Club. <laughs> <laughs> so let me find it here. Okay. Now, it's a little small, but this is how this is how this this should work. When you fill out PP37, it asks you for your tables, your chairs, but most importantly, your technology needs. When this document is turned into the office or sent via email, it's given to Lori Dalton. She can only put on the calendar what you request. She cannot read minds. Doesn't work that way. So if you look on here, it says Computer Club, when it starts, where it's going to be, Mark's Hall, and everything that you need to make that event happen. If you click on more details, sometimes more things are put on there. This is how this should be done. This is how it works. If you don't do it, maintenance cannot do it for you. They cannot read your mind nor should they call you to find out, are you correct in what you put down? The reason why I'm doing this is because this is not what happened a few weeks ago. And it caused a series of chaos. It caused Bill to have to come back to fix what a club did not do. And it caused Lori and I to get involved in some pretty uncomfortable situations. And that should not be nor should I have to be up here telling you this, but it was very uncomfortable for both of us and for Bill. So if you're in a club or organization and you are using any of these halls, please do not expect us or maintenance to fix your errors. We, that's not our job. We'll do whatever it takes to do what ever the residents need. And we've done that on more than one occasion. But what happened a few weeks ago should not have happened. And the idea of calling Bill, who's a really good guy to come in because you didn't request something needs to stop. You know, we're all, we're all volunteers here. We also live here. And most of us live here full time. This is our home. We should not be yelled at or belittled. And Bill should not have to come in because you forgot to do something. We all make mistake, myself, myself included. But we should be able to problem solve. And if we don't have it, figure it out how to get it without involving somebody else. So if you don't know how to use the calendar, this is how you use it. If you want to check what's happening every day, which all of us should be doing, then please use the calendar to the best of your ability. If you see that your reservation is wrong, fix it. Get a hold of us. Don't wait till that night to figure out your event has been changed. If you're head of a group, that's your responsibility. It's not us. So I hope this helps this situation. And if you're in charge of a group or activity, Check this every day because Lori has to make sudden changes. I don't know how she does what she does, but if you see all of this, this is just one month. So any questions, you can speak to me or Bill or Lori, because this, this is what she does. And one more thing, please. If you are over an activity, make sure that there's a contact person on there that's going to be here for the activity. Because Lori can't call somebody if they're away and your activity is going on. So please use the calendar. It's there for you all. So thank you. Thank Great, you. thank you very much. You, yeah. Anything else? Nope, that's enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I said my piece. Okay, you Sandy. Well, I'm not as wordy, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't have as many problems as you. 
Um, what I was going to do was to thank uh, Peg and Bretta for the activity fair, but it's already been taken care of by Dottie. But I certainly, uh, I certainly appreciate all that they did. And many people were totally amazed at all the activities that we do have here in the park for, for our people to, um, to be entertained by. And uh, Bretta and um, Peg, they just organized it and, and conducted it and, and just took care of everything in such a super way. And I thank them for it. Uh, we are having a blood drive on January 19th. It is from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. You will, if you are a donor, if you would possibly be kind enough to be a donor at that time, there's a $20 uh, e-gift card, a uh, long sleeve t-shirt, we need that one. And there's a wellness checkup, which uh, includes blood pressure, uh, pulse temperature, and uh, iron count, cholesterol screening. So if you would kindly come, I know we have, I know there are a lot of blood drives all around everywhere and everybody's offering everything, but this one is important to the park and I would certainly appreciate your uh, participation. Sandy, what time was that? I'm sorry. It's from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Todd? I'll start off with a seawall report. Um, the north wall is about 95% complete, and I should be calling people this week to get their boats back in, in their, those spots. Um, they're progressing fairly well now. Um, down the east wall, down to the stairs, the caps has been poured, and they're forming up the wall today. So uh, hopefully that'll get poured this week. And then uh, they're also starting to drive piles down the south wall. So it's uh, come along pretty good. And I don't know if anybody hasn't got down there to look at it. They, they should. It, it's uh, going to look really nice when it's all done. Um, got the maintenance guys been working down there most of the time, um, reestablishing the water and electric and uh, getting that all done, putting the, start putting lights up here soon. Uh, those, I don't think those all showed up yet. Those should be here soon. Get that done. So it's uh, going pretty good. Um, Maintenance guys did get the uh, shed sheds down at the horseshoes and uh, bocce ball painted. That looks much better than that uh, green color that was on there. I won't, <laughs> I won't say, what, but it's it looks a lot better. So um, yeah, other than that, that's uh, about all I got right now. Great, Mary. Okay, I'm still working on the spectrum contract renewal. Um, hope to have more updates by the next board meeting. I have uh, reached out to um, members of the computer club to get some input. I want to make sure that we're considering all the services that will benefit the residents when we're renewing that contract. So um, hoping to get some time to get back into that this week. Um, the When we um, had the financials for 2021-2022 audited, I was informed that uh, when we brought on the property on American Way, I needed to bring it in at fair market value. So I had to hire an appraiser. Uh, that was interesting. I sent the uh, requests out for appraisers to several, and I got only one response. Um, and it was quoted out for $1,200, which seemed high to me. Um, but it's a commercial building. It's a land and building appraisal. So um, I decided to ask if they would consider doing our other buildings in the park and give us a bulk rate discount. Figured, what have I got to lose? I'll ask, maybe we can save some money here. Um, we have not had the buildings in the park uh, valued. Um, we are underinsured, I can guarantee you, on all of them because we don't know the true value of them. So I, I put out a request and received a new quote back for $1,800, so for $600 more, we had this building, the large hall, the office, the activity center, the pool, the post office laundry, and the wood shop appraised for just six. So I feel like I got quite a bargain for $1,800 when we <laughs> wrapped in all of those. I don't think they realized the extent of it until they got here, but he promised me he would hold his quote um, and not charge me more. Um, about two to two and a half weeks, uh, we'll get the reports. And at that point, um, I'll be able to give the auditors what they need, but I'll also be looking at our property insurance policies and um, determining what we might need to do for coverage changes there. 
and I'll be coming back to what that will cost us um, for that. If um, we have a, a large amount of money, which is not assigned to a particular item. So once we get this done, I, we might be able to increase our coverages without it costing us a lot more money. That's my goal. Uh, let's see. Oh, what I probably should have said first, uh, we are now accepting credit cards in the office. <laughs> Yay, finally. Um, there is a 3% surcharge if you choose to um, pay your invoices by credit card. The district is not going to absorb that 3%. It will be passed on to you for that convenience. So if you bring your invoice in and you want to use the credit card, TJ will adjust the amount due for the 3% surcharge, and then you can uh, process it with your credit card. Um, so we're hoping to get, we had our very first customer on Friday, <laughs> quite exciting. Um, hoping to get some more. Um, the amount of cash that, that we take in in the office is really concerning. And so I'm really hoping people uh, take advantage of the credit card. At some point, we probably will have to consider only accepting checks or credit cards to kind of reduce the amount of cash that, uh, that comes into the office. It gets a little uncomfortable making the trip to the bank with those cash boxes, um, bags. So that's to come. Um, in December, uh, we all voted to make some changes to our um, charter related to the budget timing. And I want to thank everybody again for that. It's going to make my life so much better. I'm still working with our legal counsel to get an amended charter. Um, we still, the charter that we have on the website is uh, doesn't include the new language. So I will follow up with him again on that. Um, we're starting the process for the 2023-2024 budget. Those who have budget items have gotten their uh, reports. So hopefully you're working on uh, determining what your budget needs to be. Um, before we get deep into that, we're going to revisit our 2022-2023 budget because we've had a number of changes. So it makes sense for us to amend that budget and that be the starting point for our 2023-2024. So we'll be in February, we're going to be getting into, into all of that. Also in February, we're going to start, um, I'm going to have a, a letter for you to look at that will go out to the property owners regarding the seawall loan and the prepayment option that people are going to be able to opt into. Um, so that's coming. February is going to be a busy month. That's March. Well, I'm going to have well, the letter here for, for discussion. For It'll get months. sent out the end of February, and then they'll have the month of March to, to submit their prepayment if they want to participate. Um, the only other thing is I'm still trying to work with Florida Power and Light to look at our, and, and Russell's helping, the amount of money we spend on streetlights. And we're hoping you guys can help us out. If you have a streetlight that's not working, if you can call Florida Power and Light and report that, we want to get that working. But more importantly, if you have a streetlight that doesn't shut off, because we have some of those in the park. We, I was looking at the bills and it was pretty standard and now it's up. So that tells me at one point in time, that street light turned on and it still hasn't shut off. So we need to find that street lights. So the, the bills cover sections of the park. So uh, it's hard for me to determine exactly what light, but if you've got one that you're noticing isn't shutting off during the day, that's the more important one to call please um, because that's costing the district money. Um, I'm trying to get to the root of electrical <laughs> costs in the park. I'm trying to find somewhere back in the day, 1971. well, 1971, where we um, agreed to pay for streetlights. Oh. Uh, I don't understand why, you know, I, I'm, I want to make sure that that's the right place to put our money. We don't own the poles. We don't own the lights. Why are we paying for the power? Um, yeah. it's a, it's, we're, not, we're not a gated community. I have yet to get someone to um, help me answer that question, but I'm not giving up on it. Um, so that's still in process as well. I think that's enough. Okay, good, good information. Lewis? Um, a couple of uh, unregistered, possibly underage registers or renters or residents that are still uh, following up on and were uh, probably moving toward issuing a couple of fines in those areas. And uh, 
like to thank Russell for his help again. Russell and I have been trying to work together and take advantage of each other's uh, strengths on uh, processing some of our complaints, uh, and that helps a lot. And I think one thing I want to uh, begin, one task I want to begin is like Russell inventoried all the street lights. I think I'm going to start uh, inventorying all the communication boxes in the swales. I'm getting numerous calls from residents about uh, communication boxes that are in disrepair, that it covers are off, wires hanging out. Some of them are obstructing the water flow in the swales. So if you see me marching uh, up and down your swale, I'm not trying to uh, stake out your carport for a thief. I promise I won't wear a hoodie or a backpack. <laughs> Nobody shooting. Yeah. Might, right? <laughs> might do it when it's a little warmer, but um, I think I want to do an inventory so then I have a, all the data to contact Spectrum, Verizon, Frontier, mm -hmm. and determine which ones are, if there's ones that are abandoned, can they be removed? Because I don't know how much of the Frontier Verizon infrastructure that's still here is active even. So that's a project I'm gonna be beginning here in the next couple of weeks. Anything else? Nope. Great, Rodney. Okay, um, first pot lock is tomorrow night, five o'clock in the large hall. Make you a dish, bring it along, bring your silverware and uh, plates and everything with you. There should be a lot of people there tomorrow night and a lot of good food. Uh, coffee break is Saturday at nine o'clock in the large hall. Uh, we have a speaker on uh, medical transportation and how it fits with Medicare, as I understand it. Our big coffee break is coming up in February, and that's the dog auction when we uh, raise money for the Southeast Guide Dogs. We have done really good jobs with that in the past years, up to six, seven thousand plus dollars goes to those. So it's a, it's a pretty good size event. March, the fun singers are back with their spring program. If you miss their Christmas program, you better make the spring program because they do a really, really nice job. And then in April, uh, we have our traditional uh, crime prevention officer uh, come in and tell us about some things that we need to be aware of and, and what's going on locally, that type of thing. So uh, should be some good ones in here. I'm working hard to get the summer activities lined up. Kathy set one heck of a mark for me to make after <laughs> last year. And especially since I'm not real musical, I have uh, a couple people that are that are helping me on that. But I do need ideas. I'm, I'm a believer. You tell me what you'd like to have, and I'll see about getting it. If you don't, you got to put up with what I come up with, and you may not like it. <laughs> um, so help me out if you can. Um, and uh, we've, we've determined that the summer residents, we get a pretty good, uh, pretty good showing. I know uh, Cook's Night Out this past summer had some really good attendance uh, with, the, uh, with the park people. And also, I'm looking very, very seriously at bringing the luau back. So ladies, get your moo moos, no grass skirts, <laughs> and uh, guys with your floor, your Hawaiian Florida shirts. So, and I will need a lot of help to to pull that off. But uh, it looks like uh, it could happen. So, and we're getting. Uh, I've requested some donations from different clubs uh, to help with the summer activities. So uh, hopefully we. I have as good, if not better luck than what Kathy had last year, because Kathy had a really lot of help that we're able to do the, uh, the picnics, the ice cream social, the uh, DJ at the beach and all that, that uh, really worked out good. So we'll be, uh, be looking at that stuff. So that's pretty much what's going on. If you, if you got any ideas, see me, give them to me or email me at my uh, address uh, for my continuing rec that's on the uh, website. And, We'll get uh, looking into some things, but do it quick because I got a budget to do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> all right, that's it. All right, thank you. Russell? First of all, I want to thank everybody for being here. It's nice to see people in the audience. Um, and as far as the street lights goes, we've reviewed and driven around, and I got all 63 of them so far and turned them in, but it seems to not be helping Florida Power and Lights uh, kind of like what the park works pretty slow. But the thing about it is, if you see it, please call it in. I have a new one that just popped on that's been on for 
about a day now. So they're constantly popping on and off and staying on. So we need everybody's help. Please call the floor power and light. Um, I've emailed them. I've gone through billing. Uh, like Mary said, there's been a lot of work done um, on our free time, you know, because we have a lot of that. But uh, on another note, I want to thank the gentleman on Washington that uh, actually got it and figured it out after some confrontation that he needed to go get a county permit for concrete on county property. I want to thank him. Now, if he'll remove his sign, that'll be great. Um, then I won't have to send his letter out to him. Also, I've got several in the park that uh, the owners are not registering their renters, like Lou said. This is very important for us to find out or to keep up with who's in the park. If we have any problems with that property, can we get a hold of them? It's mainly, it's got a lot to do with safety and taking care of the residents of the park. So if you're an owner, please register who's in your trailer. That just gives us an ideal to know somebody's even in there. Um, especially when we come to cases we have to do an assist or if heaven forbid one starts burning down, we won't find out if somebody's in there uh, to notify law enforcement or public safety that comes to work on it. Um, also, I have a trailer, a cargo trailer on Massachusetts. And I would appreciate if those people are watching, if they'd go ahead and put that back in storage. Um, that would sure be nice for your neighbors because they definitely don't want to sit there and look at it. Other than that, we have uh, the fine letters that are going out and they, uh, they seem to be uh, starting to go out quite a bit. So if you want to find out about the fines in the bulletin board outside the office here, and then later on during the day, they're going to be put up uh, down at the post office. So if you don't want to go to the website like uh, Kathy was talking about, you can actually read those outside while you're walking around enjoying your day. Um, really, that's all I got. I, that's pretty short. Lori? <laughs> I'm not going to be anywhere near as short. Um, the first thing uh, I want to piggyback on Kathy's statement, Larry Stone did the, the, some pictures for me for the website, the new banner, it's just stellar and I really, I really like it and I really appreciate it. Thank you, Larry. Um, the next thing I have, I need the board's thought process on. I'm stuck with, I have a request for a memorial. And to date, I have never declined a memorial, okay? But I need your help. I have a request for a memorial on a board meeting day and they want Mark's Hall starting at 3 p.m. Technically, we're reserved until 4 p.m. And it's, it's Monday, March 20th. And I've talked to Mary and asked her if that would be a day that we would be having expecting an exceptionally long meeting because of uh, budgets and everything. And she says that that would not be a day we, that we would have a public hearing. Um, so that wouldn't be an issue, but I need to know from the board, can we in advance say, we're gonna be done and out of here by three o'clock on March 20th so that I can approve this? Or do I have to go back to the family and tell them they can't have it? And this, this would, I'm, this is the first time I've ever had to contemplate not approving a, a memorial. Can you guys help me out? Can we, we start at four instead of three? They, 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 they want it to start at four, so they want in here at three, yeah. and they're, they're wanting to need to have a Zoom component. So I'm assuming that there's family that's out of town. And that might be some sort of an impact as well. I did try to call her. I haven't been able to reach her. And then I said I just put it in a put a pin in it until I could ask the board. Um, she just got a new hip. I'm sorry. She just got a new hip. I don't know. Oh, he's playing school. Uh, yeah, I've went over my head. Is is there um, another room we could put them in? Elegant room or something. There's Wi-Fi over there and TVs. No, they're they're looking they're looking for 30 people. 
Um, I don't remember the capacity on Pelican Room, but I. The Pelican, the Pelican Room is 20. Is off 20. the top of my head, the, the Pelican Room is 20. The activity um, craft room is 50. It's not very nice. Not nice but it's, it's not, yeah, that's, yeah. So, I mean, can can we just. Yes, would it, I'm I, for it. Can, can we say, you know, look, if we've got things on the, for a workshop, if it can wait until mm -hmm. the next workshop and not be put on the 20th, then we can try to get out of here. Can, can we do that? Yeah. Well, I'll certainly try to abide by that. Uh, but I would still put them on notice that we may go till 3.30 uh, if, if we have that kind of a budget hearing or, or budget discussions. Is that our public day? We have no, no it's not we will have three day. meetings up before that where we'll be talking budget. I mean, at that point, that it should not be a lengthy budget discussion because the first board meeting in April is when we're going to have the public hearing right now and uh, adopt the budget. So I hope by then we've got things pretty wrapped up and we're not spending hours on the budget. The meetings before will be when we're doing all that. Stop smiling, don't you're going to jinx it. Um, so I'm thinking we've got enough advance notice to control our time. our time for that one meeting so we can accommodate this request. That's hey, my opinion. I can always cancel the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> There's that too. There's that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like We're that. all for that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, so, so no, I, I don't mind uh, with the rest of the board is no. let's try to accommodate yeah. that. Let's do it. Okay. All right. I, I, think, I'm, I think the board members can shuffle something off for the uh, prior week yep. if it's not an emergency item. So everybody put that in your calendar, March 20th, the meeting for March 20th. If it's not a critical workshop item, please put it off until the next week. Mm -hmm. And I will take care of that. All right. Now, <laughs> now I get into the good stuff. As Kathy was saying, um, this past Monday, we had a problem with events that were canceled showing up, changing setups and other events showing up in the wrong location and wanting to have the room configurations changed. Um, first, if you're not the person who made the reservation, please call the person who made the reservation first. The requester and I had solved the location issue last year when the schedule was made. Um, second, the calendar on the website is the most accurate available. Check it before arriving for your event. It will tell you where and when the event is scheduled. And if your event is canceled, don't show up. This is one of the things I discussed on December 19th. Everyone needs to respect the canceled status. Scheduling issues are to be handled by me. Technology assistance is to be directed to the maintenance trustee, Todd Lombardi. Just because we may have Bill's phone number doesn't mean we should use it. It is Todd's place to determine when or if Bill's assistance is necessary. So if you don't have Todd's number, get it. We recently revised the PP37 reservation for function form. The new form is available on the website and in the office. All future re reservations need to utilize the new form. And then I will be accepting recurring reservations for the May 2023 through April 2024 starting now. I need to have a copy of your bylaws and officers or a PP39 for the less formal groups with your PP37 reservation form. Also, I cannot begin processing these requests immediately. As a result, you may not receive a confirmation reply as quickly as normal. It could take up to a month to get a response. I will let you know when I'm all ca caught up. Thank you for your patience. Well, that's it. <laughs> I only have two things. Uh, one from our organizational meeting. I uh, need to appoint Peg Durham as the kitchen manager. And I'd like to have Terry Ellenberger as the assistant uh, kitchen manager. And for the media uh, committee, I let's leave that unassigned until I can get a third person. Okay. And the second item I had is uh, previously the board had agreed to send out emails, I'm sorry, letters to all of the clubs and organizations for uh, selling food items at the bingo. Uh, I was informed that those 
That letter did not make it to the club and organization. So I resent a email uh, with response by January 31st, I think is what I put on there, uh, for any clubs and organizations that would like to sell food items there at the uh, bingo on Wednesdays and Sundays. Um, so if you do, please get in touch with me. If you don't, I have received one that didn't, uh, doesn't want to do that. That's it. Okay, uh, I don't think we have any old business. Let's jump right into the new business. The first item we have was update the PP27, the owner information form, but it, uh, yep, that's all we did. Do we even need to? Yes. Okay. It's an official. Uh, I make a motion to approve the updates to PP27 owner information form to be an annual document as discussed at the workshop on January 2nd, 2023. I'll second. All right. During discussion. Yeah, I, I want to explain why um, okay. why it's required. Okay. Is because this is the only place that we have written down that it's annual. Everything else is verbal. It'll be verbal in the office that you have to fill this out before you can get a fob. That's all verbal stuff. This is where it's written down. And so we've got to get it in the minutes that we made it written. Okay. All those in favor of approving the motion is read, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion is passed. Second item we have is uh, the PP40, which is the animals, um, emotional. emotional support animal uh, form. Kathy? Um, I make a motion to approve the revised policy and procedure 40 as discussed in the November 12, 22, and January 2nd, 2023 workshops. And I'll second that as well. All those in favor wait, of approval? Wait a minute. I have Go ahead. Comments. Any discussion? Sure. Um, as my understanding, and, and when the attorney looked at the <clears throat> past document, he crossed out the portion where animals could be couldn't be on common property or on facilities. Um, does that mean that I can bring my miniature horse or my pig that's registered as a emotional support animal, which it can be truly licensed uh, into bingo or into uh, the Christmas dinner, that type of thing? No. What it what it is saying is the common property, which would be the beach, the marina, uh, the ten property, that. But bringing an animal, the only animal that could come into a an event or an activity would be a service, service animal. animal. Okay, I'm fine by that. And there is also a requirement with uh, Manatee County for the okay. animals to have the tags and to be registered with them. So if you're gonna bring your animal around the park and everything, um, that's a good idea is to get with the county and get those tags. Um, they will be coming into the park more that we're, now that we're opening our park up to these kind of things. Um, it's not a request from anybody on the board, but it's a known fact to the county. So they will be coming in here and addressing the animals. Keep in mind, if you're caught on any county property, which includes the canal, any property that belongs to the county around here, they can stop you and verify, have you verify that you have your tag for the animal and they are uh, legally an emotional sport animal for you. So there is more to that than just allowing every animal to run loose in a park. The county will be involved. So. To let you know Good. that's easier. Okay. All those in favor of approving the motion is read, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion is carried. Okay. Could I have the uh, reports from clubs and organizations, please? We have. Gordon Elton, 1804 Ohio Avenue. I'm here to report on the Veterans Club. Uh, 
We now are holding regular Veterans Club meetings the first Wednesday of every month at, well, during the season, uh, actually September through May uh, at 10 o'clock in the Pelican Room in the Activity Building. Um, as you know, we had a successful Veterans Day ceremony here and we're planning, to, as we build some membership, we're planning to do more activities, but one activity we've got planned is a flag retirement ceremony, March 21st at 6.30 at the beach. Laura, you haven't got the request for the reservation yet, but it will be there uh, today. <laughs> are, are, are you asking AM or PM? PM. PM, thank you. PM. And uh, with the help of uh, Rod, we're working with the Boy Scouts to do this ceremony. And he's had the contact with the Boy Scouts. And most people don't know that the proper way to dispose of an unserviceable flag is by burning. There's a whole ceremony involved with this to do it in a respectful way. And that's what we're planning to do. So we, we also need the, that sandy area there. And Rod is working on the, the permit with the fire department to make sure we're legal to have the fire there. Um, so that, that's our, our plan. So we're planning to have some hot dogs at, at 6.30 and approximately at 7.30, we'll actually try and do the ceremony because it's best done right at sunset. So with the, the water backdrop there and everything, it should be a really nice ceremony. Uh, if I have enough volunteers here in the summertime, because like most of the clubs, your participation uh, diminishes during the, the off season, the summer, we're hoping to do another flag exchange on flag day, <coughs> which is, uh, uh, I believe it's June 14th, flag day, I should know that off. Off hand, but yeah, that and uh, of course we'll be planning for the Veterans Day ceremony again uh, next November 11th. I want to reemphasize to everyone that might be listening and is here in the hall that the Veterans Club isn't just for the veterans. It's open as all clubs are. It's open to all residents of Trailer States. So it's. Uh, intended to be in support of veterans, recognition of veterans, but it's also intended to be in support of patriotism. Something that in some parts of our society, I think is drastically missing. Mm -hmm. And so we want to do our part uh, to try and keep that here. And we've got a lot of American flags up in the park and we'd like to see more of those than that. But I encourage everyone to consider joining. We are officially now, we've got a membership form in that. We don't have bylaws and formal officers, so Lori will be doing the- PP39 is the fine. The 39, so that's what no we expect. But we are charging a membership dues now. So we, have, we will have some money because before we did the flag exchange, we depended on people or organizations donating flags. While we'll still solicit that, we want to be able to purchase flags if necessary, and to do other things to promote patriotic activities here in the park. So I'm confident we've got 10 members that have officially signed up, but I know there's somewhere in the area of at least 100 veterans in the park, and there's hundreds more that uh, support veterans, I'm sure of. So I'd like to have everybody join if possible. The first year's dues are $10, renewal dues are $5. And you can contact me for more information. Uh, you can also contact Rod or Dottie, uh, and Karen Baker. Uh, also contact any of us for information about the Veterans Club. So I appreciate the time. Thank you for your support. Great, thank you. I don't need to find them, do I? Dottie Deerwester, 1804, Ohio. 
I'm the president of the Computer Club. Thank you uh, for focusing on our uh, <laughs> calendar. I was hoping I hadn't made a mistake on it. <laughs> and you know, use it as an example on what not to do. The, um, the Computer Club, you know, past couple of years, like with everything, membership had dropped quite a bit. We had our second meeting and we were also at the activity fair on Saturday. Our meetings are the second Wednesday of the month and our membership is already up to about 75. That may not sound like a lot, um, but it is when we've had such, you know, the past couple of years. Um, the Mary, you mentioned that you'd reached out to the computer club to review the needs. And I don't know if that reaching out was in addition to the phone or to the one-on-one -on -one conversations we've had, but I've not received a phone call. So if there is anything you need to know, let me know. Uh, yeah, I worked with Karen. She sent me an email with input that she said she had gotten from the club. So, but I haven't had a chance to look into the details of it. I'll right. get back with you. Okay. Well, okay. as president, I'd like to kind of keep it a loop. I understand some of that. Okay. Um, the I also left you a phone call because we do tech assistance with uh, members of, of the club. And our membership dues is a whole $5 a year. And uh, we go out and we help with, with printers and cell phones and cable TV and getting things hooked up. And we've recently, oh, I'd say in the past month or so, have had numerous, numerous times we go out and help because people can't get their printers connected. And there's an issue, and I left a phone message, Mary, so we do need to talk about that. There is an issue that they're not able to see the 2G and the 5G um, with the new equipment. And there's an issue with if they have an all-in-one, which is a modem and a router, is one box. I have two boxes in my house, and so others have one box. That may be the issue. It may not be. But a lot of the calls we're getting have to do with that. And so, Mary, when we talk, I'm going to talk to you about what Spectrum told me about that issue in our contract. Um, for folks, so if you are, if you, I want to put out to everybody, if you are having issues with your connectivity on the 2G or 5G, I've had one home where one device got both, one device got one, another third one couldn't connect. And I mean, it was like all over the place. It's really, really crazy. And we spend, I personally spend anywhere from two to three hours with one person just trying to get things connected. And that's just crazy time to, to spend, but it is worth it to get, get that done. If folks do have the, what they call on one, which means the router and the, um, the, router and the uh, modem, thank you, is one box uh, and you're having issues, you can contact the computer club. Our website is ccofte.com. Just think of Computer Club of TE, CCFTE. Our phone number is 941-281-5648. All of our contact information, agendas, and everything is on the website as well. That phone number is a Google Voice number, so it's an internet number. And you cannot, you will not reach someone directly. You leave a message or you email us and let us know that you need some tech assistance. You do be, need to be a member, the whole $5, for us to come out to your house and provide tech assistance one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and I also want to reach out that we do need other volunteers um, to help, uh, help us with the tech assistance. I'd like to make one mention about the Veterans Club flag disposal <laughs> ceremony. If there are any, I know we have professional photographers here in the park and some of their work is absolutely phenomenal. And if they're listening, I'd like, um, one of them to at least reach out to us and be willing to take pictures of that ceremony. Because can you imagine what it would look like to have the fire, the Boy Scouts, the flag burning and the sunset? I mean, that would just be fabulous. So if you know the professional photographers, have them contact Gordon um, and we'll go from there. Thank you. Great, thank you. <clears throat> Do I have any other clubs or organizations? Anybody on Zoom? Good. And in my scribble, I skipped right over the uh, reports from the standing committee. <laughs> my bad. Barb Sewell, 6608 Dakota Street. I'm not going to pout, but I did notice you missed me. 
<laughs> okay. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, the, our current balance the two guys have is seventeen thousand ten dollars and ninety five cents. And the last two, this last week's pro proceeds have been fifteen hundred and forty dollars. And I don't know how we made that money with that cold, icky day. People came out. It was wonderful. So our total now is eighteen thousand five hundred and fifty dollars and ninety five cents. Excellent. Got it, Lori. <clears throat> we had our last meeting on January 7th, and we discussed the, the projects that we'd like to finance. And the most consensus was to update the large hall. But we, uh, we know it needs paint, and Kathy pointed out it needs some other stuff, too, mm -hmm. that we don't even understand. But um, we'd like to, by our next meeting in is February 8th, and it would be nice to have a list of things that need to be done in the hall and uh, estimated price, price of them so we could talk some more about it. And on a personal note, I'd like to see a section in the large hall to display the pictures of all of the people, the paintings that they've done that they used to have in the hall here. It was always fun to see how much talent there is in this park. And I think that's it. Before you leave, you yes. had your first meeting in January 7th. 7th. Yeah. Uh, who were the board members that were elected? We just, we, no, we didn't. We uh, weren't able to do that because of the sunshine law. So Kathy was there. No, you're talking. No, what? your election of your. officers. Oh, we appointed them, I thought. We, we did them. We did them you, last you time. You appointed them. Yeah, you appointed no. them last time. Well, right. when I did the organizational meeting, you hadn't had your first meeting. So that was the previous board that I had appointed. Is there any changes to that? No, there's no changes. Yeah. So I can leave that as. Okay. Stands. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Did I get everything this time? Did I skip over anybody else? <laughs> okay. With that, we'll adjourn the meeting mm -hmm. at 10. 48. <clears throat> and why I would like to go ahead and take a 10 minute break here. Uh, so please turn off your microphones and be back.
Plus, I needed an aspirin. Got everybody back. Everybody's microphones on. Yeah, I think Bill has to turn us on. Okay. Okay. Uh, call to order the uh, workshop meeting. Board of Trustees workshop for January 16th, 2023 at 1059. And the first thing I need to ask, are there any additional items that need to be uh, added to the yeah, workshop? I had, I had uh, somebody ask me a question about a resident in the park getting paid for doing a, uh, an activity for a club, like cooking for a club. And they, somebody said that they thought that a park resident could not do that. And I need to get that clarified. Can that wait till the next meeting? Yes, yes, it right. can. So if you would go ahead and put that on a PP38 and we'll discuss that then. Great. I have two items that I just want to be standing agenda items for the next couple of months. We don't need to talk about them today. Okay. We can talk about them. I just so do I just put them on the next agenda? The we next don't, agenda but I would like people stand. to be thinking about them. Mm -hmm. So if I could just say what they're going to be and then go ahead. So we can have a good active discussion about it. Um I, I want us to consider putting a referendum question on the ballot for December of 2023 related to amending our deed restrictions. And that's something we're going to need to talk about on a very frequent basis. So I want to make sure that gets on there and I want it to be talked about often. So come December, it's it's there's no surprises. Um, and I also want to uh, discuss the possibility of what would be involved in moving our trustee elections from December to January when most of our residents are here to see if we can get a better turnout. Yes. Um, for people voting for trustees because our turnout is pretty sad. Maybe if we did it in January, we could get a better turnout. So I wanna look into that. So if everybody could think about that, we can talk about it on the sixth. That's it. Okay. I have one to add to that also. It's about vehicles, allowing vehicles that we opened up in 2020, about allowing a time schedule but I can, for somebody to bring a vehicle home and unload it and, oh. and remove okay. it. Okay. So that would also go in a referendum, but I'll, I'll put okay. that Okay, that'll be something we'll talk about next. Okay, thank you. And I want to remove one. Oh, there we go. Yeah. All right. See, well, project's been all encompassing and I have not prepared to do item number six. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll get it on there on. for the next. You'll just resubmit it when you're ready. I'll, I'll resubmit it for the next. Okay. Because if you're not ready for the next one, it can just go to the, you know, when you're ready. Yep. And, you know, and the other thing I want to do there is the uh, interviews for the park managers. I have it as item seven. I want to move that very last. Okay. 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 So starting off the first item we have is the uh, office hours. And what I want to do is just explore the board's thoughts of changing the office hours to include evenings and weekends. Uh, I want to explore this idea before we get into the budget hearings, because there will be a increase or may be an increase in cost uh, for labor. Uh, but what I'd like to do is consider uh, staying open maybe until five, six o'clock in the evening changing the uh, assistant. Oh, help me, I just lost part -time. it. Her time, uh, the part-time individual's um, uh, schedules, her hours. Uh, also like to consider the office manager of changing that to eight to 4.30. I'd like to, you know, increasing or explore the possibility of the uh, office assistant as a, being a full-time position. And then consider maybe even having a part-time for the evening weekends, uh, but also I need a person there as a backup uh, for emergencies or sick leave or any other type of vacations or something like that. Uh, I have had numerous uh, residents 
come to me and saying that they still work and there is no availability to the office. Uh, I've seen problems in the past of where uh, trying to get your reservations mm -hmm. in, somebody's coming in, trying to get your storage. Mm -hmm. So I just want to explore that possibility. Um, get your guys' thoughts and see just what we can set up with that. I'm all for it. I was, uh, matter of fact, I <laughs> wrote up one of these. I was getting ready to put it on the <laughs> board in there when I seen you already had one on there. So good. What I was going to say was maybe two days a week we stay open until five, and then uh, you know four hours on Saturday or something. Yeah, because, I, I, because I, the uh, park the park is getting younger basically, mm -hmm. and still a lot of people in this park are working, and uh, it's hard for them to get in by three o'clock. Yeah. I think you got to make it later than five. I mean, yeah, and and you might have yeah. to. I, that was just what I was going to throw out. So mm -hmm. that's that's for uh, you know nine people to decide. Yeah, and maybe the assistant could be in there later in the in the day, you know, later into the five six o'clock time frame, and the um, office manager not have to be there that late. I don't know. Well, what I want to point out is uh, we can always change the hours. I think the assistant is twenty hours per week. It's uh, 30 hours a week, but only during the season. season during I the believe. season. So up to 30 hours. Yeah, up but to. we can increase that to a full yep. 30, which is going to increase the budget. That's why we want right. to get right. Um, right. But we right. can also change that to where it's uh, in starting at, instead of starting at 10 o'clock, is maybe start at noon and then have them mm. work all the way up to maybe six. I don't know. Uh, or even change those hours to where uh, she would work 20 hours per week and then another four hours on the weekends, which would still leave me below the 20 hours, or I'm sorry, the 30 hours per. And something else that I checked on is um, part-time are not authorized or the state of Florida uh, says that we don't have to pay for lunches. I think that's what's happening now is um, yeah, we she need... comes in at 10, works till two, but we're paying for an hours of lunch. I want to stop that. And then with the new handbook that we developed or have approved, uh, it is only authorizing a 30 minute lunch. And I think we're also doing an hour lunch. That yeah, the office the is closed office. for an hour, but they don't take they're an not, hour lunch. And they're but, not eating their but, lunch in that whole time. But I think that's another. But that's a, uh, that's still right. mm -hmm. part of the hours that I want to change. Well, I, I would think like to change. Right. I, I'd like us to consider not closing the office at all, but having it work so one person takes the half hour right. lunch, that's the other person does the window, mm -hmm. um, and then vice that's versa, that's so we don't close the office at all. My my question is, I was under the impression that when Joyce was there. She could tend the window so TJ could have some periods of uninterrupted time to do the administrative work she does, the invoicing, whatever, all those other things. And, and I'm wondering about what efficiency drag that's going to be on her. She's the only one there. You know, you're talking about space and their, their time out, more time by yourself in the office. And that's my only question is how much does TJ rely on someone answering the window so she can have some time? at her computer to do her her job <laughs> i think we need two full-time people in the office mm -hmm. yeah definitely agree. during the season two mm -hmm. full-time people the maybe not um on the three months or so in the summer but at a minimum two full-time people during the season that is what i see in there every day um because there's a lot of things that the office manager is not doing that there's just not enough time for her to do. Um, there's a lot that I would like to delegate, okay, off my plate. Um, and having two full-time people in the office would allow that to happen. So I'd like us to so, consider that. Sounds like you're going to need two full-time and yep. a part-time just to cover, you know, when you start throwing Saturdays in there too. I think, I think we'll start with two full Full time and yeah, maybe, um, but a minimum two full time, in my opinion. 
Well, I, even the office manager starts at seven in the morning and then uh, closes at three. Yeah. Uh, just changing that hour there from eight to four thirty uh, is going to give more people time to get in here after mm -hmm. three. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's it's really not changing her schedule a whole lot. It's just that she's losing an hour in the morning, but the, the residents are gaining an hour and a half hour and a half in the afternoon. So. Uh, the, the the one thing that concerns me about that is from seven to nine is mm -hmm. when she does the it bulk of her, her work. Yes. That's when she processes everything that's put in the night deposit box. And, and that can be mm -hmm. cash yes. from the Saturday it's night true. dances that yes. she has to, you know, reconcile and get deposits ready. And um, that's her dedicated time day. to do that banking stuff before the window opens and then who knows what her day is going to be from then on. Um, be, so I think there's a lot of things we can do but if we have that second person come in earlier. Because right now, Joyce comes in at 10. If she came in at 9, she could start the window immediately at 9 when it opens. Or you're talking about opening the window at 8? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Then we would, then, um, then if you're having everybody come in at eight, you've got no time to do time. what the process what's in the night deposit box, unless you've got mm -hmm. one person doing the window and one person doing that. I'm not saying it can't work. Mm -hmm. We may have to try it out. Um, but definitely those are all the things we need to think about. Well, one, one thing to keep in mind, we're talking about the deposits that have to be carted to the bank. And if the window is open at the same time, even though she's not at the window, she's processing that just magnifies that issue. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I mean. So I, I, have, I have a problem with that. I was looking more at eight o'clock with the new credit card machine in there that is going to reduce it down to checks and maybe, but that is it's still a lot. bitty steps that we're going to have to right. take till we yeah. actually see how that machine is going to work. Right. But I, I, my general purpose was Credit to see just what mm -hmm. the board yeah. felt like of changing those hours to Saturdays and increasing it till 4.30, oh. maybe 6 o'clock. I think yeah. we're all in agreement. We need yeah. to so yeah. what, what I'd like to do, you know, we can batter this thing to death for three, four hours here. But what I'd like to have each one of the trustees do is sit down and make up their own schedule of how they would like to see the office. Then we'll bring it back at the next meeting to iron out all those questions that we would have. Uh, oh, then I would like to see, oh, Mary, I'm going to have to ask you to do some calculations yep. on if we have a full person during the uh, season, just what that would cost to increase my budget or the board's budget. And I don't know. Maybe we can even <laughs> maybe we can even have a volunteer to work, uh, lessen some of the workload of filing papers or mm -hmm. whatever. But you know, there's there's a whole bunch. But I I I think I need or would like to see the residents uh, have more access to that mm -hmm. office. Yeah, I, I totally agree that we need to expand the office hours, the the, the window hours. But I wonder if this is a board issue or if this is something for the new park manager to implement. Well, the park manager reports to the board of trustees anyway. Yeah. So uh, wherever the chair would be, if and when we ever hire, uh, mm -hmm. to me, that would be the chairman saying, this is what I want to see uh, changed in with that. But for the okay. time being, uh, All right. let's get it started. All right. Can I have time to look at that? Yes, that is um, some different numbers, what it would cost us to. And that was just mine. So let me um, no. let me get that. I already I already gave that a lot of thought. So OK, about what the budget impact would be. OK, so uh, by next meeting, would everybody bring in what they would like to see that schedule? But we can do some care comparisons. Uh, we can sit down and do some cost. Uh, analysis for the budget hearings. Do you want everybody to email those to you with no response and you compile them together for? Oh, yeah, that would probably be better. Uh, 
that way we're not so what, bringing what the, in 10,000 pieces of paper. Well, what the best thing to do would be, would be to email your thoughts, your list to Dwayne. Dwayne will compile them and attach them to his PP38 for the agenda so that we all will see the agenda item and the list. They, they can be anonymous or not, that's up to you. Um, but then we can look at and start formulating in our minds so we're ahead of the curve when we go into the meeting. Sounds good. Sound like a plan? Yep. So that means you got a week to get them to Duane. Okay, second that we had there was uh, review the contracts for instructors, uh, Sandy. Okay. Yeah. Review the con uh, the conflict between PP thirteen and no, nope. 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 that's the wrong one. The one before that. Yeah. Uh, so, review the contract for instructors is what you originally said. To amend the contract to include. No, that's not it. That's it. Yeah, it's it. That's it. This, this, this ah. is the next one. To include the total time allotment for the activity. It's this one. It's right before. So it's a little bit. What did you want to address? It's this. Uh, we want to know the time. Uh, Lori needs additional information about uh, how long actually that's going to take for the uh we don't have the the whole time on here. Right, right now, I believe the contract says that the teacher is going to instruct from 10 to 11. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't account for coming in early, take your coats off and get your mats laid right. out or whatever it is you're doing, and then collect your things after the instructor is done. Um, I don't know if that needs to be part of the contract or just something part that- Part of the reservation. That, that when the reservations filled out, it's expanded yeah. to include the start and finish time. Right. Sandy, who do we have these contracts with? What are we currently contracting with for um, art instructors? Art, line dance, dance fitness, aerobics, yoga, or yoga and aerobics. Couples dance. Couples dance. Yeah. Meditation, stress reduction. <laughs> Forgot about that. Yeah, I have, I have a list in the office. Of well, what what I um, and these are these are instructors, but these aren't all paid. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. most of these were not. Some paid. of not, them, some of them are not. Um, the only one I know that's not is aerobics. Uh, dance fit? No, the, no. Uh, line, line dance, dance. isn't. Uh, meditation. Meditation gyms. Do some of these not get paid by the board? However, the people who attend bring two dollars and lay it on the counter, and so the instructor gets whatever is laid on the counter for the class that day. Exactly. Okay. 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 Um, I, you know, I think this is probably a good time to look at all of these contracts. Um, I, so if we're paying for dance fitness, we're paying an instructor to instruct to, to run that class. Mm -hmm. Dance fitness. Dance fitness, we pay half of. We pay them $30 and then they collect from the class to get the rest of it. Okay, and non-residents are allowed to attend that? Yes. Okay. And um, how about yoga? Yoga is, um, we pay her $50, and then she collects whatever, $5 from each person. And that's open to non-residents as well? Yes. Okay. I think this kind of, as we're entering into the budget season, I think it's fair to have a discussion about money that, we're spending out of our budget for any activity that's open to a non-resident and whether that is where we want to be spending our money. Um, and I think the reason why it's typically open to non-residents is because we don't have enough residents 
that are interested in the class to justify the class if we only have four residents and you know do we have a minimum number of participants that have to be residents in order to justify that money it's supposed to be 50 percent okay no it's Five, supposed six, to be ten. more it's 10 10 You're ten. The minimum of 10 10 in a class yeah oh, 10, yeah. Res 10 residents 10 okay. residents or else it's not or you, or you don't have a class or it's not, you know, it's not a, a uh, responsible. I mean, I just think we need to revisit where our budget dollars are going and make sure we're spending it on the right things. And if we don't have enough resident interest in some of these classes, um, maybe we use that money for another purpose when we're looking at our 2023, 2024 budget. And I don't know what that is. Hopefully we'll get some ideas from these surveys, but um. I think as we're looking at contracts, I just wanted to put that out there. So we don't probably have to make that decision today, but when we start looking at the budget for 2023, 2024, I'd like us to get, have a discussion about where our money is going and, and when it comes to these kinds of Can we get a activities. survey on how many residents are actually using each one of these? Well, I think we need to, we, we, I thought we were supposed to have sign in to make yeah. sure that there we is, had 10 there residents. Is, there is a sign so if we have sign-ins, we just need to see those yeah. and it's, kind of make yeah. sure before we budget that money next year that we're getting the right amount of interest to, to offset the cost. That's just something I'd like us to so take a look at. The yeah, art classes don't have sign-in. Okay, well, we probably need to start making sure we've got enough people. Um, they have out. You know, I mean, I know, you know, um, you know, there's the ceramics and the copper enameling and all ceramics that. And I is no more, but it okay. All right, it's not, it's a good <laughs> item. That's why I was wondering. All right, you 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 brought up copper enameling. Yeah, and copper enameling is not a trustee reservation. That's just a club group the or organization. Club. Yeah, and I'm not going to limit the number of people. Who's well, be I, it's a budget line. There's here. money in the budget for art and ceramics and copper enameling. So if it's all art, then that's fine, but the, the Cera count ceramics, number. Ceramics hasn't been for a couple of years. Okay, they, then all that ceramics. money is for art, then, then even though that's the account description. No, cop, copper enameling let me contact Laura Wood, but I didn't believe that she was aware that there was, the dollars might be for the kiln expenses, the electric electricity or something for the kilns maybe. I don't I know. Wouldn't think. I don't know, but okay. I think, I think, um, I just. Right. But some of that got mixed in with. Clubs, yeah. Clubs. And, I I think it's worth an active discussion yes. when we do the budget on all of these activities and what they're costing and whether or not it makes sense to continue them. So for the ne for the next board meeting, yep. Sandy, you'll put together a list of who your who is on your your reservations, what you're paying for uh, for the sure. instructor, what the what they're charging the residents and an idea of how many residents and how many non-residents are attending. Mm -hmm. what, what's up? What, what's wrong? What's up? I don't know. I just see a whole lot of um, misinformation. Yeah. Uh, what I thought was you wanted to look at the terms and conditions of the contract. <laughs> to make sure that we, in accordance with PP 13, the board is gonna authorize what classes or activities that we're going to fund. Then the uh, actual contract itself didn't ever stipulate exactly $5 was coming out or the board was going to pay $100, but the remaining uh, if it was a $200 that the uh, residents or the outsiders were going to pay the difference in that. I, I haven't seen that in any of the contracts <clears throat> or anything that's really specified in saying that. And I think it needs right. to be. Right. So, but what I'm looking here is uh, I just got confused when you were, everybody was going through different things. Over. Do we actually have a list of what, instructors are being paid no. and what clubs and organizations are taking donations to pay for the uh to that class no, no. we don't 
And that's what so I think we that really video, don't know. And, and that's what I'm what saying. I'd like play. to have a discussion around as we're preparing the 2023, 2024 budget to make sure we know what we're going to have mm -hmm. and what our the park's financial contribution to that is going to be and make sure that it's the right place to put our money because there's enough of an interest by our residents mm -hmm. to have that. And if there's not, then if we want to continue it, it's a total pay by participant and no no park money. Okay, because what I see in PP13 is you got to have at least you know, a, a right. minimum of a 10. Um, and if you don't have it, then to me, there's no class unless they actually want to pay individually, like you just said, right, right. to have that instructor right. in here. Um, so I think that all of that needs to needs be reevaluated. Right. I, I can do a list of the clubs, groups, and organizations and answer the, answer that question okay. for all of them. And if I don't know the answer right now, I'll contact them between now and next okay. meeting. Awesome. And I'll have a and list then, together for them. And Sandy will do the, the same thing for her uh, classes, the cost versus the resident cost, what we're paying versus what the resident's paying, well, and how many residents versus non-residents. That's what I was going to say. We all had participation to right. it too, correct? Yeah. Right. That, so so once we decide seat, which yes. ones we're going to go forward with, then we need to make sure we've got the right contract in place for that. And then the room reservations account for the total time needed. Kind of that can be the domino effect of determining what we're going to offer. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the one thing, um, there, there's no, to my knowledge, um, thought process in here on how many participants are needed to reserve the room through the summer. I understand we have to have 10 participants to have a paid instructor, but I've been encouraging some of the clubs that I'm involved with, look, if you've just got four people for the summer, go to somebody's house. Your, your table will accommodate four people. Why am I setting up and cooling a hall, an entire hall, for four people. And so there's nothing written down here. And so as we do this, I would sure love everybody to think about it and then input your thoughts into, is there a minimum number of individuals that we want to be involved in X to have it go use through the, the summer, facilities. to use the facilities. <laughs> and, and take maintenance time to do set up and right. take down. Exactly, flight. exactly. So um, just keep that in the back of your minds and we'll talk about it. Sounds good. Thank you. And I guess this is going to fall right into it, but the next item is the mm -hmm. uh, PP13 conflict of duties. Um, again. All right. It's this one. I don't know. This one. Uh, review the conflict between PP13 and position descriptions of health and welfare, seasonal and social recreational duties regarding paid instructors. So, where do you see the conflict? Well, health and welfare is supposed to be for the of the park and uh, getting assistance in order to maintain a sense of normalcy in their later years, and hiring for activities does not fit in that description of those duties. So I feel that it should be in, a, in another place. I, I guess I'm not following what you're saying. Uh, if you go back to the PP13 of what you're referencing, it, it says the seasonal social and recreational trustee will review the applications. Are you talking about the applications for the paid instructors or is that supposed to be both of you? Uh, I, what are you I, headed can, with can this? I intervene for a minute? Sure. Um, I know that several boards ago, um, the all of the <laughs> classes, the paid instructor classes were under seasonal rec. Yeah, that's how it used to be. And that's why PP13 says it. It's under seasonal rec. And it, mm -hmm. it does. And then and then it was changed to put on health and welfare. And I think that's what the topic is, is to put it back into seasonal. Um, I think if we had, now I'm going to probably regret saying this, but I, I think that um, there needs to be a serious discussion, as you all talked about, about having paid instructors here. 
I think that we have a lot of classes and they're wonderful. I mean, I'm, I do most of the exercise classes and I really enjoy them. But there are many times I am the only resident here, but you can't make people go. And you can't. And I, you know, much we can advertise so the cows come home. They're very physical. A lot of our people just can't do it. Um, but they still benefit. So that, you know, we have to decide upon that. Are we going to have that? We have two line dancing classes. Do we need two different line dancing classes? We have couples country dancing. Um, I think as a board, we need to review every contract that comes in here. That's part of PP13. The board was supposed to agree on these contracts and mm -hmm. it didn't happen. It's not happening. So I, I think if we decide to put the classes back under seasonal rec, but in doing so, by allowing health and welfare trustee to do that job, it's needed here. We need a, a trustee to do the welfare job of our residents. It's needed here. We have an aging population. A lot of people are here year round and they have multiple needs that really are not being met to make referrals, to do all of those things. I think it would be lovely to do more of that and not worry about the contracts. I mean, and does the contracts also mean that you're checking out the classes, that you're monitoring the classes, you're making yeah. sure how many people are going, looking at the sign-in sheet saying, how come what's going on? Um, I don't know if the injury and accident reports were ever dispersed to all the instructors. That needs to be done. Um, maybe the the trustee over health and welfare can take over the incident and accident reporting and make sure those are being done and sent to the insurance company as, as right now TJ is doing all of it. Um, I wouldn't mind having it go back under seasonal rec if, if the trustee over health and welfare will do more of that, will be that person to help the residents with referrals, sick room supplies and all of that. That's what it's supposed to be for. And that's how I see it. Right. So. Well, I, I see what you're saying. And I think one of my items here is I'm reviewing the if board this... of trustees position. So maybe we want to continue yep. that down <laughs> when we get into yeah, there. That's fine. I think it. But overall with the contract here, um, if Lori will go through and give me all the paid and unpaid and what we're paying those, you're going to give me the copy of the contracts of what we have. Because when I did the research on, on your PP38, uh, the terms and conditions lacked everything. Uh, it yep. didn't say who was doing nope, what. There's nothing. It's just, yep, pay them a hundred bucks or whatever. And it didn't exactly. decipher. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to wrap the whole time. thing up. But again, the PP13, uh, my opinion is that if there's not 10 residents, you don't hold a class. It, you know, I, and I just don't. Lori's only doing that. clubs and organizations. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. clubs. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sandy's doing Sandy, that. you're going to give me all the other um, paid instructors. Okay. Uh, did I beat that to death? Um, is that the only conflict you had? Yes. I thought I had one more. There is. Oh, yeah, those who wish to participate. Yes. Uh, discussion time. of wording regular uh, rules and regulations, section one, paragraph C. Uh, and it says um it's actually section two, two C. C. You know, section it's two. Section oh, two section C. two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um part C. It says um, need to change those who wish to participate should be uh, changed to those who participate. And again, once we revisit again, all that, again, all when we back. go through that, uh, I want to save that because I have I got some comments about it. So we can we can revisit. I, I think that can go. Revisit the rules and regulations when we get back to the position descriptions of the uh, board of trustees. Yeah. Okay. 
that all right with everybody? Yes, yep. I think that's yep. appropriate. Uh, Kathy, you have the uh, changes to okay. the seasonal recreational <laughs> activities. Yes. <laughs> okay, the, the first major change, and for those of you who attend Saturday night dances, if you've gone to one, you know by nine o'clock, <laughs> we have a, the, a mass exodus of people. Um, I've tried really hard to delay the 50-50 drawing. If you haven't noticed, it's getting later every dance. Um, they're on to me now. They really are. They're not buying them because they know I'm going to delay it. Um, but I would like to propose that we change the dance times for next, for beginning in November to six to nine. Um, if you're on stage and you're an entertainer and you see people leaving, it's kind of hard. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. is. And I've checked the, the surrounding, you know, like the, the Elks and the DAV and different um, trailer parks around here that have entertainment. And they're all going to six to nine. This is nothing new. Now, New Year's Eve will go to midnight. <laughs> <laughs> nine can't, to midnight. <laughs> we really can't change midnight. So that's kind of a magical time. But this would mean going, if this is okay with you all, um, that our dances would change beginning in November, not now, but November to six to nine. If we go to two hours, you know, we still have to pay a three hour band fee. Bands don't, that's, they're not going to, they always book three hours. Right. So I, so what do you all think? Good with it. I know okay. it's, it's a change, but folks aren't staying. That's my bedtime. Lunch, I'm, going, I'm going to sleep earlier too. Yeah, <laughs> I, get it. I think we've constantly got to list, you know, watch and make changes, and then just revisit. Yeah, you I mean, know, I, I think trying this for one it, season yeah. to see how it works, and if yeah. it makes a big difference, great. If it didn't change anything, then we can either keep it or put it back. I mean, yeah. you know, we should. I don't think there's anything wrong with constantly revisiting things and trying new things sure. to see yeah. what seems to work no, well. No, no, we'll do 50-50 at 5 till 9. So you, <laughs> <laughs> so you do. Yeah. 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 9 because, rather than 8.30. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, you know, if you notice it, like, you know, the day on Saturday night, you know, I, we we did 50-50 about at 9, what, 9.30-ish. And right afterward, boop, they're yeah. gone. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like magic. The thing is, too, you don't have to go to the dance at 6 o'clock. That's right. true. You can come in at seven o'clock if that sure. fits your schedules with the meals, sure. and that's. But and that but I would but, but, but I would hate that too because you're playing and it's if you're on stage and you look out, they really do look and see how many folks are there, and I warn bands when they come in, expect to have an exodus at nine o'clock, because that way they're not caught off guard, because it's. When you, I watch it and it's like clockwork and it's, it's kind of hard if you're up there and performing and giving it your all. And the Christmas dance was the only dance so far where people stayed. I was mm -hmm. so, I was so pleased to see that because, okay. you know, these bands are not cheap and we play, you know, we pay for three hours and that's what they're bound to do. But I didn't want to do anything unless the board weighed in. Louie? The question is, are people leaving because they only want to dance for two hours or are they leaving mm -hmm. because they want to get home and watch American Pickers or something at 9.30? You know, I don't, I don't know. know. Nine o'clock is magic. Nine o'clock is a magic time here. And it's not just here. It's across the board. And I mean, a lot of a lot of the clubs and organizations, they've all gone to six to nine. So do you think if you change it from six to nine, they're going to leave at eight? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. No, because they only want to dance for two hours. Doubtful. Well, that'll be determined. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. it's up to them. I, I clearly think I, you should change it. I agree with Kathy and, and yeah. Mary that let's see. Yeah, how have it to works. try. Uh, right. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So that absolutely. means Kathy's going to be back on the board next year to follow through. <laughs> <on that. laughs> good, good point. Exactly. Kind of what I see right now. Okay. Good point. Shall, we, shall we get those petitions going? Right, so we'll talk later. <laughs> and do we really need to bring this back to the yeah. next? No, board I just I just want to get your input. That's okay. all. I don't like to make major changes. The other thing is about um, we have a event scheduled on March 18th, and it's a it's the a, it, it's a big band night, and we have a 
a big, an actual big band coming to perform. And they could, they would only do it in three hours. They wouldn't come in two. So it was billed under a show time. But the more that I start planning for this event and asking some residents of what they feel about it, it's going to become a dance because it's a three hour event. And it's, it's kind of a big event. We're going to try to have food, uh, do some fancy decorating maybe. And I would like for it to be a ticketed event, free, free to residents. That's without, it's free. Uh, Ticketmaster will be open again. <laughs> but but I would also like to offer it to the public after the residents have ample time to get their tickets. That's that's always the first consideration. But not everyone likes big band music. And so it may not be everyone's cup of tea. Um, we're trying to have some swing dance lessons prior to the event get people really involved because this is this is different music and it's one that I grew up with. So I'm a huge big band fan. Um that's why I booked it, to be honest with you. <laughs> but it's it's the Ocean's Eleven Big Band and there's 11 piece orchestra and a vocalist and they really are magical. So I would like to see again the how the board feels about going to become a, a, an event where we have tickets to the residents, maybe have reserved seating and then offer it to the public. Because I know a lot of people who come to our dances who would love this. They really are dancers. And, you know, you can come and listen to the music. You can leave during, because there's one intermission, you can leave during intermission, planning on having food during intermission, though. Um, but it's something that we've never had here before. I don't think there's any objection from the board okay to do with that. that? Um, okay, I just no. want to make sure it's kind of a different that. thing. But no. I want it to be a, a field night because it's, kind of different and you can get dressed up if you want to, you know, your nicer t-shirt shorts or, <laughs> yeah, or your, or your really fancy clothes, but I want to make sure it's okay. Sure. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yay. Okay. I want to jump right in there to uh, reviewing the board of trustees positions, uh, descriptions. Uh, what I wanted to look at, there was look at the uh, position descriptions itself, see how we could change uh, the workload status of each one of the trustees. Uh, first one I looked at was the North and South trustees. Uh, the number of homes on both sides of the park, could that be changed? Uh, I looked at my own position description and there's stuff in there that is not even applying. Um, <laughs> When we changed the handbooks, I neglected to change my position description because it's still saying uh, section 100, 1,700, which is not even applicable anymore. Um, so they do need to be changed. Uh, I also want to see if we can combine or do we actually need to have a organizational chart that says the North trustee, the South trustee, mm -hmm. uh, health and welfare, the mm -hmm. chair, or does it want to go by seats? Like it says, when you oh, go I to see. the election office, it's not by the chairman, it's by seat number two, three, mm -hmm. four, whatever the hit. Mm -hmm. Do yes. away with our names. So column. do away with the names on that. Uh, but I just wanted to bring that up to see what everybody else had. I took a, I took a look at my, and I mm -hmm. kind of hung my head because most of what the stuff on mine is TJ's job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, TJ, TJ, TJ. Mm -hmm. And that was another one I looked at. I looked at your position description and everything that you had in there that was just overwhelming, the same as what Mary had. Yeah. I, I wasn't uh, sure where you were headed with this. So mine, one, mine's two, simple. Three, four, five, Hell six, yeah. seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I added 13 items to mine that aren't in there now that I do. I just totally uh, rewrote mine. I totally, I mean, mine is, if you really want to know what's involved, it's two pages of 29 mm -hmm. items. So I don't know what we want to. Do you want us to rewrite our, what we do and give them back to you and then go from there? Yes. Okay. Okay. I, uh, well, yeah. especially if you want to, because uh, I, I, 
keep hearing you and, and Lewis are sharing information mm -hmm. on uh, developing letters or something that go out for the fine schedules. Uh, I've also heard uh, that you have taken, take, wow, taken part of Marina, which is really the south side. Do I need to have the Florida Boulevard as the dividing line, or can we work that out to something? I mean, to, to make it more equal would be to divide the amount of homes between each other, and uh, where he uh, he has eight hundred and eighty. He's got like yeah, eight hundred and twenty-five hundred and fifty. You have four hundred and something. I mean, it begs the question: Don't we need three? Well, trustees at four hundred and twenty-five homes each. And can so which means can, can we look some, at the other job descriptions to see if we can move right. some functions around to free yeah. up one of us so that each of those each of you have 425 homes that you're responsible for because mm -hmm. I think anything more than that is absolutely ridiculous. It's um, hard to keep up with what you've done. Exactly. Especially with turning stuff into the office and trying to keep up with it once you've turned it exactly. into the office. So I mean I, I kind of looked at all the job descriptions because not just my own I spent a lot of time on my own but um you know I kind of looked at the continuing rec and I looked at the seasonal rec and the health and welfare the three uh job descriptions to see if there was anything we could do mm -hmm. um with that and one of one of the things I came up with is Kathy on yours that has decorating the large hall for Christmas and taking it down 80 percent of that's done by maintenance crew so yeah. it, shouldn't it belong on the maintenance job description? Why, yeah, you I kind of like it where it's at. <laughs> you like it. I'm recommending it gets moved to maintenance. Well, and and actually, right? it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't a big deal. I mean, it didn't require well, any time, but it's, you have volunteers. So it right. could mm -hmm. go under somebody else. I mean, I'm not it, saying maintenance, but. Well, you know, it, it's, it's, we, we need have to, a lot if, of crossover. If we're going to try to look right. to move things around, we need to take some things off too. Right. And that one was the easy yeah. one. That I thought yeah. wouldn't add a lot to you, and right. it probably considering, like it I said, not it's be that big of a deal. You were already there. I was there, anyways. It's not just it's, I'm not a decorator, it's yeah. the biggest <laughs> thing. So, yeah. as long as I don't have to make design decisions, has to be calculated. That was determined by a board a while ago. We oh, I know the first Thursday after Thanksgiving yep. and the first yep. Thursday right. in January. Yep. So, the dates are already set. It's already set. Um, yep. so. Yep. And it's a maintenance participation. Right. It's just getting the volunteers in. So I, I you you know, know Kathy does a great job. And, yep. well. <laughs> <laughs> and so I don't know how you want to do this, Dwayne, because I've I like I said I looked at all of them and I sort of came up with um instead of seasonal recreation and continuing recreation be summer and health and, and welfare. Um I had um I had summer renamed in case you're wondering. Let me see if I've got the right name. So um there was a district activities trustee, mm -hmm. okay, which does things that, and then there was a activities trustee. Um, so the bands and the, um, let's see, what did I have on the activities? District activities trustee was New Year's Eve. It was the Christmas dance. It was hiring the bands for Saturday nights and it was show times. Um, and that's what I had under the, district activities, um, the um, district programs trustee were things like um, the health fair, the blood drive, the, um, the coffee breaks with guest speakers that bring information into the residents. Um, and I had those types of things in there. And the one place I didn't know what to do with to be honest, is um, Sandy, all the items on your job description, which I honestly am embarrassed to say, I don't even know if we're doing any of these. Um, I mean, it talks about um, making sure that there's appropriate organizations and sources for mm -hmm. sick room supplies. It talks about um, uh, overseeing um, meals on wheels. Um, it's got the Christmas cookies in here, which are done by. Um, the volunteers, um, at uh, community care, assistance agencies, transportation to to um, medical appointments. Uh, I did it, that. 
Okay, you, you coordinate that. So if anybody in the um, district needs transportation to a doctor's appointment, they I call you and you can. Okay, I I didn't even know that that was available. That if mm -hmm. if I have a resident that needs to go to a doctor's appointment and can't get there, that, that yeah, you'll take I care have, of organizing that for them. Thank so you. I think, you know, if there's a lot of things here that I don't know about. So I wasn't sure if what we needed to do with them, to be perfectly honest. Um, you know, sending out the sympathy cards and making sure the bulletin board is updated. I think that's done by a volunteer now that helps you out that, you know, mm -hmm. that can be done by a volunteer. Um, just like the, you know, I don't know. I'm just thinking if there's a way we can look at all of those things and see if we can get that down to two positions, bring up a trustee to share in the public relations so that we have 425 homes per trustee it might be something worth looking at. You know, I would not have an issue in Kathy doing the dance as <laughs> so a dance fan. Because I I mean, she's done such a phenomenal job with that. And and she has all the contacts and everything. And I mean, I can still sense. the uh coffee breaks, the potluck which is under me, um, those kind of things. I would be comfortable of handling and then and then with what they would involve could even pick up the, the 425 mm -hmm. additional units because mm -hmm. that's basically all I'm doing is is doing the summer activities. I mean, we could work together on the uh, on the picnics, that kind of stuff, which is is not a, a real big deal. The, the getting the bands in that is a I much agree. larger situation and like i say she's got a she's got the contact she's got the good handle on it uh the only thing that's going to affect is when people aren't here taking a position to work or to volunteer excuse me um we don't work but <laughs> to volunteer for um if they're gone in their absence um where does that leave us well i think when that leads us to the point that when you run for the board, this is a 12 month, it's a 12 month commitment. And it is, and I'm sorry, but it is, it is, it's, it is, it's a 12 month commitment to run for the board and it's very difficult. But to what Rod said, um, <laughs> continuing rec and seasonal, there's so much overlap. Yeah. This continuing means that it's all year long. So I, one thing I I want to make sure that in someone's job description we're talking about summer activities. That's that was a huge hit last summer, mm -hmm. and I don't want that to go away. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think they'll let it go away for one thing. Um, but it's it was a big thing, and so whoever does it, and you know I I really love the summer activities because <laughs> they're fun mm -hmm. to do, and you can have a group of volunteers. You know, spearhead that as well. I mean, it's they're simple to do. So well, now so, that I've opened up Pandora's yeah, box, you, know, you, know, you really have. And I, um, to, oh, Louis has. And I still question the timing of rebaking all these while we're in the process of trying to hire a park manager, <laughs> because some of these things is are going to be on their plate. Mm -hmm. I, I think I don't think we want to. I'm not saying we don't want to talk about it and address it, but I just I'm just you know like like when we're talking about the the I don't know what the right word is enforcement part part of that's going to go to the park manager. And the other thing that's, that's interesting true. to me about the enforcement is it's different in the summer and the and the in the yeah. winter. Like right now, strangely enough, to, and, and Russell, you might reach over and slap me when I say this, <laughs> but to me, in the during season. <laughs> <laughs> there's, not, there's not as much of it because all the residents are here Every, most people take care of their lawns when they're here and stuff mm -hmm. in the summer oh there's hundreds of lawns literally that get become a problem you know the ones that now there to me there's less of them but they're more uh, a little more body to the complaints that come up in the season the only thing about people being here is you're addressing other types of, of problems yeah the trailers the people who are doing things that normally you wouldn't see all of them in the summer and it's easier to control in the summer. That's basically what he's saying. It's a little easier to see and to ask people to do things that are here. Yeah. The people that are gone don't have any ideals. So 
you see more of the small stuff um, go away, the things we have to major take care of. So that's so it's almost seasonal for the amount of work you do. Um, I think, yeah, to me, I, I guess, and I don't know if you see it the same, but I see it in the summer. There's more complaints, but they're typically long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the winter, in the winter, they're more. What's yeah, the matter, Dwayne? They're more than they mow every five days, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm still um, wondering where in the hell I'm going to go with this. You better get, you need to get See a what definition of what, what <laughs> did I just do. Well, uh, yeah. I agree with you that uh, maybe I should delay this until we hire a park manager and let the park manager go through. But to I, me, it's still, it's still us. our it's responsibility it's still us. to still develop what yeah. we think in there. Yeah. Um, I don't they, think it's a bad want, effort. I'm just not yeah, sure you pull the trigger on the whole thing. Your your recommendation about changing the the org chart to seat numbers mm -hmm. that really doesn't fly because the chairman is over the office manager and the office staff, not seat one. Because I I, I keep rerunning for I don't know what my seat number is, but seat yeah. four, um, and. I may be the secretary, I may be the chairman, and it depends on what falls underneath it. So I think though now the headings may change. Correct. Okay. Yeah. But we still need yeah. to have the headings in there to say who's responsible for office staff. Well, I, I guess what I was looking at, it would still say chairman, but be seat one. Uh, if the secretary is seat two, that would be seat two and so on. And you would still fall under there, but the organizational chart is going to change if and when we ever hire a park manager, that whole thing yeah, is going to shift. So right. I was looking at that, but I think yeah, that's, I think that's, I, I guess I'd like to have day. everybody just go back yeah. and review what they have in their current yeah. position you description, description yeah. add stuff if you think so, or even make some comments. Make sure to see it accurately represents what you do, what you're actually doing, what you're actually and doing. then. And then do you want us to let me get out of this thing? <laughs> how, how, how do you want to compile them? Do you want us to send them like uh, with the other send you? Them go to ahead you? and send emails okay. in to me and then I can uh, okay. and bring that back as a PP38 what, later. What's your deadline? Is it because uh, for next meeting they'll have to have it for Monday? See, this is what uh, uh well, what is the 16th? The next one is February 6th. So you have two weeks. Look, <laughs> No, you got one week because he's got to have it to be able to turn in the paperwork to attach to the agenda to put on the website a week in advance. 16. Don't I have three weeks? I, I think yeah. so. Yeah. I have three weeks for the next February, meeting. February, yes. No, no there's three weeks for the next meeting. He has to have it by January 31st, and today's the 16th. Yeah. We have oh, so we I got have that extra week. week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry. No. So you want have, it for, month. have it in by the 31st. Actually, the 30th is a Monday. All right. 30th. All right. 30th. It has to be in before that Friday before. Yeah. Okay. Whatever that is. Yep. I'll, right. I'll figure it out when I type the minutes. Okay. Now, All the right. one the one thing that I did forget is we wanted to look at that rules and regulations part two of where Sandy was bringing up no time mm -hmm. and the number of individuals participating outside mm -hmm. the park. We did, and you said, you said you had other things you wanted to change on that we were going to look at it later. I did. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't take a break. Oh, yep. No. Um. Yeah, because she want she wanted this change made, and you said you said we were going to talk about it later, and so I just. Well, later I thought we were going to do. Oh, later now. In, in, okay. Later <laughs> now when we were my, going through the bad, trustees. But the only thing in that I. I think I see in here is at no time can the number of individual participating from outside the park, which is visitors, exceed those who wish to That's participate. Right. That's right. So that really gave me, well, if so, they have only one resident, that means the other nine, uh, in accordance with PP10, don't want to participate. So am I really restricting? those instructors if I don't have residents or should I just take out the word wish and go right back to not more than or the minimum of 10 people per class since we were already yeah. talking about that yeah well this is um 
Each year by April 1st, all organizations and clubs with regularly scheduled programs must reaffirm. Mm -hmm. And so that it goes down through the rules of reaffirming. And then it says to support equal availability. And then this applies to clubs, groups, and organizations. Okay. Okay. And then section three, clubs, groups, and organizations again. So this on, is all, sorry. Okay. So what we're doing then is we're clarifying that the PP13 for the contracts for mm -hmm. instructors, you have mm -hmm. to have a minimum of 10. Right. Mm -hmm. And for clubs and organizations, it does not matter. Well, right now what we're saying it does right now the document says it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Um, and I I had asked for clarification, the board to think about the summer summer. Mm -hmm. Am I having the board having the room set up for four people to play cards? Um, you know, that sort of thing. So I wanted some direction for that. And when you said later, I thought it was going to be next meeting so i asked the board to think about it and let me know next meeting <laughs> oh i agree with you i, I missed later you only have four people is there going to be a minimum Perfect. requirement before we involve our maintenance yeah. crew doing setups and takedowns and and if there is i need to know what that minimum is yeah and then i can make the changes to part b for both of these i can take out the wish to and then i can i can add the the minimum participation for summer which will only be, this won't be for the clubs and everything. This will just be for contracts. No, no, this is clubs. For clubs. Okay. This is okay. clubs, clubs, groups, yeah. and organizations. Yeah. PP13 is He's the contract. Okay. The I don't know. I, I'm battling between where park and recreation, right. the, they're paying for the building for their assessments. Mm -hmm. Do I really mm -hmm. want to put a limit? And that, that's entirely up to you. I mean, for, can I just, I mean, I, I did aerobics all summer and I was always the only resident here. And it was a small class. But to me, I felt like, well, I, this is what I, it was where I live. It was wonderful. So the idea of limiting, it's just like when we did movie nights, there were very few people here, but those that came enjoyed it. So are we going to start limiting because People don't want to do this. If we did that, then all the activities we do in the summer are going to be looked at. Probably. I think I we have to look only, at that. I thought we were only addressing the contracts. Right. I'm, I'm sorry. But just with instructors. To, now, right. If we're getting into the other things, right. I don't think we really need to change But, you know, that. maybe on, on, the, on the instructors, maybe what we need to do, especially for like aerobics or whatever you want to call it, you know, should we... Should we even have them use the hall or can we do it where we just pay people who come, just pay that person outright and not have the district pay it? Would, would that get us out of that? that the but then we're know. getting right back to are we of, charging I mean, the instructor for using the hall? Now I we're see, getting into I see clubs, groups, mean. and organizations. Okay. Yeah. And the rules for clubs, okay. groups, and organizations say you can't exceed the number of non-residents, okay. can't exceed the number of residents. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So, pinning it until next meeting. Next meeting, please. Please bring in it back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll bring it back. Dwayne, okay. Okay. Uh, the last item we have on there is to interview for the park manager position. Uh, like everybody know that we have four individuals who have applied. Um, if we can, I'd like to take just a 10 minute recess so I can talk to them, give them some instructions on how we're going to process the interviews. That are with the board? Absolutely. Okay, with that, we'll turn off your mics and I'll, if I can have the four applicants, I'll just meet you.
<laughs> You're sweating. I am freezing. My hands are like yeah, ice. Little, I'm chilly too. Maybe the other side. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I am freezing. You're getting cold too. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. so lucky. Oh, I just feel cool. fine. I'm freezing. All right. Okay. Okay. Whenever you're ready, Bill. All right. Uh, we're going to start the interviews for the uh, park. I'm sorry. Please hold your comments. Uh, the first person that we have here is uh, Craig Banner. If you would take your time, introduce yourself to the audience uh, for the people that are watching this on uh, Channel 732. Go right ahead, tell us some stuff about yourself. My name is Craig Banner. I'm from Lansing, Michigan. I am a uh, former corrections officer. I worked 12 years in law enforcement. I have experience in building. I've had a builder's license since 1996. In Michigan. I have been in a professional capacity before in account as an account executive working for uh, Midwest Communications, a company that owns 200 radio, uh, 200 radio stations throughout the Midwest. I have been uh, I've, I've been working lately as a, a teacher in Michigan, teaching all grades, kindergarten through 12th grade, all subjects. I've got a lot of experience in different capacities and I've Dealt with a diverse group of people uh, in my lifetime uh, with the law enforcement. I have uh, experience in, in some of the things I think that you're looking for, policies and procedures. At that job, uh, working at the facility, I was responsible for being able to do over 30 different jobs, and each of them had a different set of post orders that all had different policies and procedures. I knew all of them because sometimes there's downtime, and I like to keep myself busy by reading. and. So I was able to familiarize myself with the kind of language and how to decipher contracts and policies. And then with my account uh, executive experience, um, I was able to actually draw up contracts and presentations. So I come here from Lansing, Michigan to interview with you all today in hopes that I could uh, be somebody that you're looking for. And I appreciate the opportunity to do so. Great, thank you. Give me just a minute. I'm going to kind of change the procedures. Uh, normally, I start off and ask a whole series of questions, but as I ask the questions and the applicant uh, answers, if you have a question in there, please go ahead and jump right in. Ask your questions so we're not just delaying the whole process. Okay, uh, the first question I had there is in reviewing your uh, resume, you identified that you had 12 years of law enforcement. Uh, what did you do? I was a corrections officer at uh, a correction, uh, a state facility in Jackson, Michigan. I, uh, like I said, I've done every job in that facility, including working the gates, the control center, um, the Sally port, yard officer, uh, housing unit officers. I've done transport. I have uh, um, watched uh, prisoners that needed treatment at the hospitals. Um, I've done every single position that you can do there. And uh, like I said, I was familiar with all of them and I did my best at all of them. And uh, each, uh, each job was different, but it really all just boiled down to is you had to pay attention to what you were doing and uh, realize that things could happen that you didn't expect and be ready for it. And then can you go ahead and give the board examples of how your experience of uh, in law enforcement is going to benefit the park? Oh, sure. Um, <clears throat> well, like I said, in dealing with whether it was the correctional clients themselves, the inmates, or the volunteers uh, that came in for uh, various activities that they would do, um, the general public, the visitors, the shift commanders, other officers, administrators. Um, it was a diverse group of people, and you had to be able to deal with people differently on different levels. Not everybody's the same. So when you were exposed to that environment, 
Um, you had to be versatile and you had to be ready to change how you were going to handle situations on the fly. So I think that would apply here because at that facility, there were 1,850 people in there, um, just the correctional clients themselves, not to mention the couple hundred officers, all the vis visitors, the healthcare professionals uh, that you would deal with well over 2,000 people. And I know that this community is a park of eight, uh, 12, 1,250 uh, homes. And there's, so there's a lot of different people in here. I feel that my, my uh, personal skills apply to that, knowing that it, while here, I would be introduced to all different kinds of people. And I, my experience would allow me to be able to, to deal with the different situations that would arise uh, within the community. And then would you give examples of your leadership skills and how you would apply them to the uh, park manager's position? When I worked uh, for True Green in Fort Wayne, Indiana, I was, uh, I was the branch sales manager. And it was my job to hire a brand new staff. Uh, the, the person that had the job before me left and all the whole staff left. So I brought in uh, all but two new salespeople, a 10, a 10 uh, person staff and trained them all. I hired them, I interviewed them, I trained them. And I had to be someone that they could count on and someone that they could believe in to teach them how to do the job. And sometimes in being a leader, you have to seek out help. If you don't know everything, you, you can't be afraid to ask somebody for their suggestions. So that's what I did. I called in uh, the, the 19 branches that were in that region. I called at least 10 different branch sales managers. I talked to a few general managers. I got myself prepared to lead that group of people. And I got them ready to hit the floor running. And we went to uh, that, uh, the Fort Wayne Coliseum and we had a home show there. Uh, there was over 30,000 people that came through that, that home show. And my sales team did really well for being a brand new green, you know, wet behind the ear staff. They, I, I, I led them and I showed them how to do the job. Um, and I led by example. Sometimes they wouldn't be able to make a sale. They'd say, well, they put them on hold. I said, all right, well, let me give it a shot. Maybe some, maybe, maybe I can do this. Uh, maybe I've got something that'll work. And then I would show them my, my technique. And sometimes it did work. And then they would apply the same technique to their own uh, ways. With your things. training and stuff, then did you wrap your uh, uh, position descriptions and employee performance standards or? Say, say that again, please, Duane. With the training that you did with the, the new staff, did you write up their uh, position descriptions and their performance evaluations? Yes. Did yeah. you conduct both? Yes, I did. Um, my general manager was more involved with the technician side, the service side. And he pretty much let me handle the sales all by myself. If I needed them, um, I, I'd go to him for certain things that I wasn't uh, um, privy to doing because he was the general manager. But most of the time, I ran the sales completely by myself. Okay. And that's why I sought out other branch sales managers to get their input and find out how they had been doing things since they'd been part of the company. And then you, can you explain uh, what computer skills you have and what different type of programs such as QuickBooks, Excel, Word, et cetera? I can do Microsoft Office uh, proficiently. Uh, I created well over 100 proposals for different companies in uh, Michigan that I would go out to um, small companies and multi-million dollar companies where I would have to create uh, an account, uh, excuse me, um, a marketing campaign for them. I mean, I've worked with uh, University of Michigan Flint. Um, I've worked with uh, many, many companies where um, I would, I would have to, uh, like I say, create their campaign and deliver it to the market in the in the in the most proficient way uh, possible. And and they put their trust in me to to sometimes even write the commercials and record them myself. And I did that many times. So I've worked with um, in creating those proposals. I got very very uh, familiar with Microsoft Office. I'm familiar with some some certain kinds of uh, programs that you use to uh, track your your clients um, and uh, and how to put the commercials into into the bank, are called our inventory bank, so that they could be delivered at the right time. 
So I've gotten very used to using many different systems, many different systems. And, and I think that experience definitely has helped me since I've worked there to continue using other uh, programs that I hadn't been familiar with. But because I'd used those in the past, it made it easier to adapt to new, new experience. Okay, and then can you describe how you uh, have developed any annual financial budgets and uh, conducted the presentations or made changes to the budgets? Oh, yeah. Uh, with uh, Midwest Communications, we were responsible for doing weekly, monthly, and uh, yearly budgets, uh, True Green as well. And we had to set goals and meet them. And, and our budgets were based on the previous year, year, uh, year um, uh, by year. And we were, uh, like I say, we we're responsible for delivering those budgets to our, our uh, managers. And so I've, I've, prepared, I've prepared them on Excel. I've, uh, I've done uh, different graphs and charts on PowerPoint. I've used uh, a lot of different uh, a lot of different systems to create things that um, that m many different people could understand. Maybe some people like bar charts and other people like graphs. I can deliver all of those. And I've used SPSS as a, a data analysis system that I learned in at Ferris State when I was getting my marketing uh, excuse me uh, marketing degree. It's um, it's a state of the art data analysis system that um, will give you those charts and graphs I'm talking about. If you put in, if you put in the information, um, that was one of my classes that I took while at Ferris State getting my business degree. And it really helped um, moving forward to be able to give people budget reports that were accurate and complete. So you do know Excel in, in addition to Microsoft? Yes. Yeah, Excel's part of Microsoft. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. QuickBooks is the one that's different. Are you yeah. familiar with QuickBooks? I'm not familiar with QuickBooks, but because okay. I've had this experience in the past, I can tell you that uh, when I first went back to college at 40 years old, I didn't even know how to open up a Word document. But I worked at it, and I stuck right. with it. And a year later, I spent a year on the dean's list. And then the following year, I spent a year on the president's list. Um, and I earned a scholarship to go to Ferris State. Uh, so. I'm pretty resilient. If I don't know how to do something, I figure it out and I stick to it until I get it done. Yes, when I was in uh, when I was in Fort Wayne, I was the branch sales manager and I ran a staff of uh, 10, 10 people. I hired all of them. I inter I interviewed them. Um, I've interviewed. We interviewed well over a hundred probably closer to 150 people to get those 10. And I, I trained all of them. Were those office people or sales people? Sales people. Sales people. So you haven't actually done any reporting? I know I have not. I, I've, uh, I know that uh, one of the things I've done in the past, though, that's, that's, on the resume, but not. I've I've ran my own business, um, my maintenance business for uh, pretty much since I left the corrections department, and I got my own truck, trailer, and tools. I've you know because I was a, a builder, I know I'm very familiar with tools and building materials and and things of that nature. Um, so I know that there, that applies to this job because you do have a maintenance department, and I would be able to relate to. Uh, the ladies and gentlemen that work in that department and and understand what they're talking about and they would understand what I'm talking about. So I know that although I don't have direct experience in that capacity, I do actually have uh, enough experience and my skill sets apply to where people could relate to me and believe, hey, I'm talking to somebody that understands where I'm coming from and what I'm doing and what I'm saying. What qualities do you have that would make you an effective leader? I'm persistent, I'm resilient, uh, I, I'm d results driven. I think that when people see that you're willing to do the same work that they do, if it needs to be done, it needs to be done. And I think that it, uh, we have to dig a ditch, it's time to pick up a shovel. 
and let's get started. I mean, if, if I had people call in sick before and I asked them, well, what, what did you have to get done today? And they told me what they what their what their agenda was. And I said, "All right. Well, what if what are you, what if you're not here tomorrow? What do you have to get done tomorrow?" And I did that work for them. Um, they they knew they could trust me. Uh, I'm I'm I take the bull by the horns. I get started when, whenever you have to get something done. Uh, I'm the kind of person that if I'm supposed to be out at five o'clock in the afternoon, that that's quitting time, and the job's not done. I'm not leaving until it's done. And it doesn't matter to me if it's 10 o'clock, midnight, one in the morning. I'm not going to leave until the work's done. And the one thing, and when I show up in the morning, the one thing I won't show up with is an excuse for why it's not done. So people look to my work ethic. And I've shown that in the past to people uh, as a leader. Also, I'm approachable. I take people's input and I'll implement it if it's a good idea. Because it doesn't matter to me if it's your idea or my idea. I want the best idea, and I don't care whose idea it was. It's time to give credit where credit's due and move on and, and, get, and get the work done. Okay. Craig, you mentioned that you uh, have experience with, with a diverse group of people and that you, um, you handle people on the fly. So I have a question about that. Griller Estates is now experiencing a changing demographics. Um, we're bringing a lot more people here who are 55 plus and the, and the, the younger retired people. So how would you convey information to a wide diversity of residents that we have here? Find a common ground that they all, uh, the common ground here is that this is a retirement community. So whether someone's 55 or 85 retired, and I, I know I, from listening to the uh, meeting earlier, there are people that still work, but I would say the vast majority of the people are retired. So I need to um, talk to not a certain age group, but a certain demographic of retired people and, and try to reach the whole group, not just one part of that group. Uh, so, I, so I would find common ground and common interests that they all share. Yes. Oh, yes, definitely. Um, working, working at the uh, at the uh, correctional facility that happened all the time. And sometimes you need to uh, deal with people one on one. A lot of times, most of the time, you wouldn't want to deal with somebody in front of people because. It makes them uncomfortable. I'm, I'm the kind of person that wants someone to be comfortable. So if I, I think that's best to deal with them one on one. If I'm having a dispute with somebody, I don't want to talk to them in front of ten other people, especially if those are their peers. And I have to maybe um, say and say some things that that might make them feel as though they have to lash out. Um, and I'm not going to say anything that's that's offensive and, and try to get them to lash out. But you just don't want to, if you have to lay down, um, say, as, as they say, lay down the law and you have to apply the rules. Uh, it's great to have a good rapport with people and build long lasting, strong relationships. But in a job that that uh, requires the ability to enforce things, you can't always be everybody's friend all the time. You can be people's friend most of the time, but when it comes down to uh, apply, the, apply the rules, yes, sometimes you have to pull them aside and talk to them one on one and try to get a resolution. And if somebody's uh, maybe upset, try to diffuse the situation the best you can, uh, use words to diffuse the situation. I mean, in, in working in the correctional facility, we didn't have nightsticks, there weren't any guns, no mace. The only thing you had was your ability to communicate, excuse me, your ability to communicate with people. And so I think that that's one of my strong points is that I, I, I have a lot of experience communicating with people, especially people that are upset. We listened to our board meeting today and we're sitting in here. Um, based on what you saw in that board meeting, what do you think some of our problems are that you would need to step in and, and help resolve? 
Well, I took a few notes. Sorry about that. I took a few notes here. Uh, policy adjustment and creation promotions were so, was something that intrigued me because I've done many, many pr promotions. I heard Russell talk about the, uh, the street lights um, and how sometimes you have to talk to the county to get things done. I'm persistent. I don't, if I have to make a call, I'm very good at making calls. That's how I earned my living, is making calls and getting people on the phone and, and talking and going through the steps, jumping through all the hoops, if you will, to get those things done. So whether it be the street lights or coming up with new promotion ideas, uh, pardon me, just one more second, here, uh, or, or creating uh, policies and procedures, adjusting them, um, you know, addendums, then I think that, that I, I, I'm definitely suited for that. I know that there's some other concerns around the park that I've heard um, that I'll offer. The, um, if you will, security breaches. There's been some problems with people in the park. Um, I've, I've got ideas on that. I'm very observant. I'm, I'm, that's, I developed observational skills working in law enforcement that I would see things and I still do to this day that maybe maybe someone else wouldn't see as quickly. Um, and I know that you have had, I've heard people talk about Airbnb and, and there being people in the park that maybe shouldn't be here, uh, that maybe are, are, the rules are being violated. I've, I've thought of a way to kind of curb that. Um, I've got some ideas on that too. So, I mean, I, I does that answer your question? Did you have yeah. a When you said you had some ideas, give us an example of one idea. Okay. Well, you right now you're using fobs. I would suggest investing in fingerprint technology. Um, right now I can open this iPhone with my face, but the one I had before that, I put my thumb on it and it opens it up. You can invest uh, five to $1,500, depending on what system you get to get a fingerprint technology thing that you could install at the pool. So one of the problems is, is people are using amenities that we, they, they don't, they shouldn't be using. And maybe they're here for 31 days when the rules say they're only supposed to be here for 30. With the fingerprint technology, you walk up, you put your thumb on that pad and you, you can't pass your thumbprint off to somebody. You have to register it with the office. Not only can you tell who's going in and out, you can tell how many times they're going in and out. And you can shut that fingerprint off in 30 days. So it doesn't work on day number 31 or 37. And for people that are doing Airbnb, well, um, it's gonna make it more difficult for them to continually come down to this office and register people's fingerprints every two weeks, every uh, month, every, you know, how many nephews and cousins do you have? At some point there's, you've run out of uh, things to, to say that you're doing and, and, and it just makes the rules be followed more closely. So that's one idea I have among others. Okay, uh, you, you had the uh, ability to sit through our board meeting, but um, what else did you do to prepare for today's interview as far as understanding the district? And well, I read through uh, the deed restrictions. I've read some policies and procedures. I, uh, I talked with people um, about what they thought. I, I, I told them the layout of the grounds and I got some of their thoughts on, on my idea. I said, hey, do you think that you know, do you think this is a good idea? I think it's important to include other people in, in, uh, in your thoughts mm -hmm. because it's one of the things in business school that they're going to teach is you have an ideal number of people for, um, for a group focus, for a focus group. So one of the reasons why you have that focus group is because maybe, maybe I come up with an idea I mean, it's kind of good, but I tell you the idea and you think, yeah, you know, it's all right. But what if we did this? And now it's now it's a better idea. And like I said, I don't care who's who has the best idea mm -hmm. as long as it's the best idea. So did you um, I prepared in that manner. OK, did you read the charter? Did you read the Florida statutes that govern how we do business? So you understand what we're required to do by the laws of Florida? I, I did brief them, yes. You did? I'd like to go over them more. Okay. 
Um, you said you looked at our policies and procedures, uh, rules and regulations, all that. Um, employee handbook. Employee handbook, okay. Um, do you, uh, you said you did budgets. Um, you did your line item budget for your department and you gave it to a manager. Yes. Um, so you've never done any compiling of budgets or um, accrual-based accounting principles or worked with auditors on auditing financial reports. That was always done by somebody above you, I'm gathering? Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Um, well, what, what I will say though is um, I have experience in, in accounting. Um, you know, while it's limited, I, I will offer this. Mm -hmm. um, when I took accounting in college, I, I four-pointed it. Okay. I know credits and debits. Okay. I'm, and I'm very, very good with numbers. Okay. It's one of the things I enjoy most because I'm an analytical person. I, my organizational and analytical skills, I would say, um, I'm proud of them. I mean, I, I don't want to sound immodest, but, but I do believe that I've got the analytical and organiza organizational skills that it takes to do that, to complete those kind of tasks. One of my standard questions that I always ask is, um, what would you like me to know about you that I'm not going to get from your resume? And when I just look at your resume, the first thing that kind of jumps off my head is uh, you completed your um, college in May of 17, and then your next position started in November of 17. So I'd like to understand what, what was going on for that gap. And then you left that in January of 18 and your next job was July of 18. So what happened in that six month period? Um, and then this resume goes through March of 20 um, and it's now January, 2023. Um, is that when you've been doing your teaching that you spoke yes, about in yes, the beginning? Yes. And I also that summer when I got done with my degree, I went and picked up uh, the class to get my, my class ACDL. So I was doing the class A CDL eight hours a day for um, that summer. Okay. All right. I, I, and you've been yeah. self-employed all along this time. I see since 2012, uh, doing your uh, lawn service. Yes, and painting and any other jobs that I could I could uh, bring about. So you're currently living in Lansing, correct? So you'd have to relocate down here. Correct. Okay. And your degree is in what again? I've got a, an associate's in uh, business administration, and I've got a bachelor's in uh, business marketing. Okay, and business marketing. Most of my other questions. Oh, I sure. <laughs> what you you reviewed the park? Obviously, um, you looked at our website. What what else do you know about the park? Oh, I know it's been here. For I want to say that since the 1950s, and it's gotten bigger. I, I've I've been familiar familiar with the park since um, 1999, 2000. Okay. I know that it's there's 1,250 uh, trailers here. It's, at one time, they had their own fire department, arena, post office. It's it's a beautiful community. You have family in the park then, or my mom lives here. Your mom. Lives my dad here. lived here okay. when he was alive. And I've, I've met people over the years and made some friends. I haven't gotten to know people as, as, as well as I would like to get to know people. Um, but I know, and to answer <clears throat> Mary's question a second ago, I, I will tie this into that. One of the things that I would say that you don't know about me from my resume is the thing I know about this community is it's a beautiful place. I, I love being here. And I know other people do too. And like I said, my mom lives here and my dad did. And people like my mom and dad live here. When I was growing up, my mom and dad gave me and my brother everything they possibly could to make our lives the best it could be. And I'd like to, I'd like to give back to um, my mom and dad and people like them. I'd like a chance to represent the children of the parents that uh, live here and do for them things that they can't be here to do themselves. And that's why I want this job. And that's something that won't be on that resume. And your mom living here, mm -hmm. if there was a complaint against her, how would you handle that? That's exactly where I was going next. So I think she'd be in trouble. <laughs> I think she'd be in trouble. Well, yeah. that's, that's what I was going to say. My Maybe question she goes was, to the corner, right? <laughs> no, knowing people in the park, are you going to be able to be objective to, uh, you know, 
and oh, no problem. Certainly, certainly. That's why I said, although I do know some people in the park, I don't know them as well as I'd like to know them. So while I'm familiar with them, it's it's I've I've made some friends, but we're talking and seeing people a few weeks a year. And my objectivity is always been held intact, especially when working at, at the correctional facility. Uh, you're talking about the law and other people at that place weren't always the best people. And I'm not talking about just the clients. I'm talking about some of the people that work there. You, you had to take care of yourself. And so if they were getting into some things and doing things that, that they weren't supposed to be doing, yeah, maybe I do have a rapport with them, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to sacrifice my life and what I'm doing uh, in my best interest, my family's best interest for someone that's um, trying to take advantage of a friendship. I won't, I won't allow that. We have another situation in the park where the people overfill our dumpsters and it costs us money to do that. How would you uh, address handling something like that? Well, <clears throat> I'm not sure if there's cameras installed over there yet or not. Mm, there oh, are yeah. cameras. Yep. But I would, uh, I think if maybe if, if, if it was possible to put a fingerprint over there too, so that way it can kind of, you can, you can reference the time that people go in so you don't have to sift through eight hours, uh, 10 hours of footage, and, and you can kind of track when, and, and know exactly who's done this. And I know that you, got, that you all are issuing fines. I think that's important. There has to be reper repercussions for people that are doing things that they shouldn't be doing. And it's a start. And I think that there's other things out there, other avenues and channels that you can follow. But that's definitely a good start. And I think that uh, what I would do about it is uh, I'd make it a point to not just get over to the to the to the uh, waste management area, but also be around in the park, be seen, talk to people um, and and just observe. You can you can pick up a lot. And I think that maybe it'd be a good idea to uh, camp out over there, hide behind something and. <laughs> and walk. And, and watch what they're doing. We have people that do that. <laughs> <laughs> I I think I think uh, yeah. There's always Not something that can be done them. to uh, to curb and deter uh, bad bad behavior. But uh, but uh, like I said, the cameras are a start and the fines are are a start too. Greg, if if you were given the position and you relocate, would you relocate into trailer estates or would you find Housing outside of you, outside of trailer estates. I, I I would look for an apartment outside of trailer estates. I mean, possibly at first I would have to do. Uh, I, I don't. I, I think I won't. Well, I've thought about it extensively actually, and I've saw. I've found some apartment communities close by. I think it would be great to live here. Uh, Why? Well, I I don't want to get into my mom's hair, and I don't. I don't have a place you know, here. I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking of that. I was thinking of living in the community that you have to police, if you will, and how you would feel about that, how you would handle it. And you're saying you wouldn't, you would, you would live outside the community. And that's what I was, that's what I was interested in. Yeah. I, I, I know that that would be the best, uh, the best thing to do yeah. to start. And if, and, if, and if, at some point, um, possibly if there was an opportunity to purchase a place in here, I might consider it, but I know that to, to get started, it would be the best thing to just get an apartment something, I believe. Okay. Craig, Thank you. Um, I know you've been in sales. You're, you're an educator now. Can you describe your time management skills and what tools do you use in order to effectively manage your time throughout the day? Yeah. When it comes to time management, I, 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 I'm like I, I, I spoke about earlier, I'm very analytical. So whether it's time management or cost analysis, I want the best possible outcome, the optimal way of doing things. So I, a lot of times, if I have a goal, I'll write, I'll take a blank sheet of paper and I'll write down where I'm at at the top of that sheet and where I want to be at the bottom. And then I start filling in all the things I need to do to go from the top of that sheet to the bottom. 
And I think of ways to uh, not waste time. I think that's, a, that's, that's the most important thing is, you know, when we were all younger, uh, our teachers would tell us, don't spend a lot of time on question number five, if, if, you know, six, seven, whatever the question may be, if come back to it. So I'm, I've always used that theory in things. I don't, I don't spend a lot of time on one thing. If it's holding me up of completing other tasks, I will get through, get everything else done and then come back to that one. So at least I've got the majority of the things that need to be accomplished, accomplished. And that's how I approach time management. I, I think it's important to hustle too. Don't be willing to work longer hours. Be willing to, don't, don't just do the bare minimum. I, I've always been the kind of person that um, I will meet expectations, but I think it's better to exceed expectations. Set the bar high, go above and beyond. Once you get up there, set the bar higher. Let's keep going. I, I think that a lot of people, um, we, we uh, including myself at times, we, when I was younger, there's, there's wasted time. But as you get older, you start to realize that how, how much I, I've got to do the most with the time I have here on earth. And if I don't uh, stay focused and dedicated, I, I won't. I won't be able to do that. So my time management management is about urgency. You have to have a sense of urgency, and you have to be relentless in your approach to get things done. How do you feel about working time as volunteer <laughs> and controlling or managing our cultural? I I feel great about that. I feel great about that. I, I think, like I said earlier, it's it's always better to have a lot of input. And when you can bounce some good ideas around a room, somebody in that room is going to be able to grab a hold of it and maybe and add to it, maybe add to it, um, enhance your own idea, or maybe I can hear your idea and I can add to that. I, I like the idea of working with the team. It's It's what I'm used to. <clears throat> Do you have any experience on grant writing? On grant writing? No, I don't, Dwayne. I, I, I will say this, Dwayne. One of, one of the things I enjoy most is writing. Uh, while I don't have experience in grant writing, uh, I have wrote many proposals, professional letters, filed reports, uh, working at the Department of Corrections. I, had, I was responsible for writing tickets and filing reports. And if I didn't do them right, I could end up in court, working 12s and get sued. Working there for 12 years, I never got any charges or any kind of civil suits brought up against me at all uh, because of my writing skills. And since then, I've actually added three, uh, three college degrees because I didn't put my general associates on there, but I, I acquired that before I got the uh, uh, associates in business administration and the marketing degree. Writing's my passion, one of my passions in life. I enjoy it very much. I like to read. And so while I don't, like I said, while I don't have experience doing that, I, uh, one of the other things I did in college was business law. And I, I uh, four-pointed those classes too. Um, I'm familiar with the, lang the, the, the languages that are used. I, I, I know how to write the things that you're talking about. I just don't have any direct experience doing it. I have no more questions. Anybody good. else? No, I just want to make sure. I'm not sure everybody got that page. We didn't. No. Nope. We just got the first. Notes on oh, the it's back. on the back. Notes on yeah, it's on. The back side. Oh. oh. I knew I read it, and then it wasn't. Yep. So. yep, mine was on the back. Oh. Well, it was supposed least, to be there. At least you okay. conveyed I'm the just letting, I'm just letting you know that everybody, because he was he kept saying, as, no. as you, no, you know, no. as I said, and I'm like, we, some of us only got one page of your, of your resume, Craig, and that's what I'm making sure that everybody understands is not everybody saw what you presented. They're only seeing half of the picture. In, in your resume. And I just want to make sure they knew that. Nothing against you. It's a, our paper processing. But you did go over everything that we yes. didn't have. Yeah. 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 That's why I grabbed your means to look at it and skim it and make sure that we were all aware of what was there. Yeah. So. All right, so uh, my apologies, you had to be there for that. <laughs> so how would you correct? No. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. 
Okay, I want to thank you very much for yes. taking the time to uh, set aside for your interview. Uh, if you would go ahead and uh, step out, or if you want, stay here and listen. I don't know. No, I right. prefer no. to have you yeah. step out. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I think Bill is He's pretty already to get them. But thank you very much. Thanks, thank you all. Thank you for the time and the opportunity to be here. Thank you. What? I'm blank. But the You're right. blank, dude. I know. That's what I'm Tell saying. Me, it's okay. I don't. I don't know. I'm just. Why some I just of us wanted everybody to understand that there was more to his resume than what thing. we had laying in front of us. us got we had the meat and potatoes, but we didn't have the education. <laughs> meat and the potatoes. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon. If you would, uh, this is Vanessa Thompson. If you would go ahead and, and uh, tell them who you are, uh, introduce yourself to the audience as well as the people that are on Zoom, and then just tell me a little bit or tell the board a little bit about yourself. Okay. Hi, I'm Vanessa Thompson. I am currently an assistant uh, community manager at a 55 and over community. Um, I previously worked as a field operations uh, Supervisor for Social Security Administration, um, held several different positions there, um, including a claim specialist, um, union coordinator. And a um, year and a half ago, I made a decision to leave and pursue something that I was more passionate about. So um, during that time, um, it's kind of um, come to the forefront that I wanted to run my own community. Um, just for the simple fact that I have seen and spoke with residents um, that made me realize the things that were important to them that weren't being done that I felt that I would be able to do and provide for them. So today has been enlightening sitting uh, during the board meeting, um, which I really was telling another applicant. I like the transparency of having a board of trustees and everything is public. Because I think that um, we need to always keep in mind that this is people's homes and their money and their life savings and that um, we're entrusted with that. So um, that's something that's always been just very passionate to, uh, with me is, is being able to help others and help them have a happy life. Um, so I am currently a mother of two boys and my youngest son just graduated high school um, going into the Army. So I'm from Southwest Virginia, if y'all hear an accent. <laughs> <laughs> um, moved, to, moved to Sarasota three years ago uh, for my son to go to Sarasota Military Academy. So Great. new Floridian here, but I love it. So um, that's about all. Could you please tell the board uh, what you are doing as the assistant community manager? And I think it's Cove Communities? Cove Communities, yes. Um, currently, I um, vet all new applicants, homeowners, and renters, um, make sure that they are compliant with all of the requirements as far as identification, income verification, um, also enforcing that uh, to make sure that if we get a complaint that there's someone in the community that isn't properly vetted, that we Investigate, I investigate that and then refer that on to our community manager for rule violations. Um, I also do all of the invoicing and coding of the invoices. Um, all of the customer or excuse me, resident complaints um, and troubleshooting. I issue all of the work orders and keep those organized to make sure that they are being properly completed and timely completed. Um, follow up with vendors that um, outside vendors that are servicing different parts of the park. Um, I answer all of the phones. <laughs> I do a lot of different things <laughs> as far as that goes. So most most of the administrative work falls on on my shoulders. Um, but I work um, with the maintenance team as well as with the community manager, the lifestyle director that does all of our activities in the park. Um, so we have 534 homes that, um, that it's a land lease community, so it's set up a little bit differently than here. Um, but I also do all of the 
um, monthly lot rent collections and um, auditing of the records. So when I started there, we had a $40,000 a month ongoing deficiency in our rent collection and brought that down to zero in two months. And it's been continued to be zero. So no one is delinquent in their lot rent. So I've been actively pursuing that because it's hard to run a community if you're not collecting the rent. <laughs> um, and then also the auditing of the records and coming from a federal government background, um, very much a rule follower. I love policy. I love it. <laughs> so I want to make sure that everything, um, you know, again, it comes back to accountability and making sure that we have everything that we need from each of the residents, um, ensure that everything is running smoothly. What, I'm sorry, when I was going through your resume, uh, I was trying to put together all the different dates and what I, uh, in February 2005 to 2007, you're at one place, but then again at 2007, 2015, you're at another. Uh, were those because of transfers or yes. were you training? I, they how, were because how were you of at the same place? I'm sorry, the same agency at the same time, but right, no. <laughs> right. Um, so with within Social Security, they have different field offices um, that service different locations and have different needs. Um, I was in where I currently where I lived at at that time was within driving distance to multiple field offices. So different opportunities arise for, um, for different types of training and qualifications and promotions. Um, but also I had two medical hardship transfers because of my son's medical conditions and needing to get proper medical care for him. Okay, so Roanoke. Wyatheville and Bluefield, they're all within driving distance, and you were training new staff, uh, yep. <laughs> as well as being employed back in Kansas? Myrtle Beach. I owned, a, I owned a rental properties in Myrtle Beach that I managed. I don't see. Well, I'm, it just says here, uh, Social Security Administration subject matter expert, mm -hmm. uh, trained and coordinated in Kansas City IVT. I yes. don't know what that is, but. It was interactive video training. So it was a remote position. Okay, but that's in uh, January 2017 to 10, 17. Mm -hmm. but at the same time. I lose myself. I held uh, from multiple Roanoke, positions. You were, still in, uh, mm -hmm. you were still at Roanoke, Virginia. How did that yeah. work? It was remote. It was a remote. Remote. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was a remote okay. uh, nice. special training program that I was selected for. And then on uh, your current position, you're, you're saying that you trained, mentored, and motivated employees to the maximum team program productivity, how did you do that? Um, I did find training needs, seeing how different people learned. Um, not everybody learns the same way and not everybody receives adequate training at the time that they're hired. Um, but also there's areas that they would struggle in. So I would meet with individual um, employees and try to figure out where their deficiencies were, where their strengths were, and then build a training program for them um, around those deficiencies and strengths. And you also identify uh, successfully identified, referred, uh, and negotiated teams for the EEO reasonable accommodations and union related human resource issues. How did you do that okay. since it's a federal and those are all pretty much mandated? I'm sorry, I don't understand your, the question. Okay, uh, I, I'm asking how you successfully identified, referred, and negotiated terms for EEO. So if there was an issue with an employee mm -hmm. um, and there was a potential EEO violation, I had 
would identify that in a dispute with another employee or um, another management personnel and then refer them to EEO and provide statements or supported them in that process. Okay, so you're not the EEO officer. I was an EEO specialist to... during okay. part of my time there. Yes, and an, and a union coordinator. So I was on the contract negotiations team for the national union. And then that leads me to uh, just what knowledge you had on the human resource issues. Do you have a background in human resources? With not dealing with EEOs and arbitrations through and... Social Security. With that, I mean that was part of the responsibilities as the union coordinator, and then also as a supervisor. And in that current position, did you uh, develop your own performance evaluations and standards, or were those pretty much prescribed? They were somewhat prescribed. Um, so that we did have to do extensive documentation um, throughout the year and um, mid-year evaluations and writing them to the standards that were set forth by the agency. Uh, then would you describe your ability to develop and maintain effective work, working relationships between uh, employees and managers? Absolutely. Um, so. One of the things that I think a lot of people forget is that we all have different personalities. And um, a lot of times people will have an interaction with another person that they, one person internalizes it from just past experiences or, you know, having a bad day or whatever the case may be, and just opening up that line of communication instead of having people just hold that animosity towards one another. And then from that point forward with that interaction with that person, it just continues to build and build and build. So um, one of the things as a supervisor, I made sure that people sat down together and confronted their issues, got them out on the table, talked them through. Um, and sometimes just personalities clash and that's okay. But you have to find a common ground to, you know, meet the goals of, of, either the agency or the employer or whatever the case may be. Um, so just opening up that line of communication and recognizing the differences um, between people's personalities. That's a huge thing that we forget about is that everybody, all of you all I could say something different to and every single one of you interpret it different. You would hear something different just based on your different personalities. And then can you give me some examples of your leadership skills? Absolutely. Um, I definitely am very down to earth. Um, I believe that there is anything that is that is in a position that is below mine, organizationally speaking, that I should be capable of doing so and be willing to do. I think that's important for people to know that you're the person that is leading them is working just as hard as they are, if not harder. Um, and staying open to listen to feedback, both positive and negative. Um, I am very much um, an advocate for accountability. I think accountability is, is absolutely necessary to the success of any type of a business whatsoever. You have to hold people accountable. If you don't, they become complacent, and they take advantage, um, or they get lost in the shuffle. So, uh, holding people accountable, giving them clear guidelines as to what the expectations are, and then checking back in to make sure that they're meeting those, you know. Um, if they're not, they're going to always go to the things that they are comfortable with instead of doing the things that um, they may not be so comfortable with but scared to ask. So I think checking in with your employees, uh, your staff, um, your coworkers, even with management, am I am I meeting the expectations that you have for me? So. And then, can you uh, tell me about your computer skills? Sure, um, I am an Excel nerd. <laughs> I love Excel. I love spreadsheets. <laughs> They're wonderful. Um, I can do um, you know pretty much any of the Microsoft programs um, very proficiently. Um, a lot of troubleshooting when during COVID, um, 
most of my staff went home and they had never teleworked before. So they were all at home trying to figure out equipment. So I had to provide remote assistance for um, different network issues, computer issues, connectivity issues. So that was a learning curve for all of us. <laughs> Pretty proficient computers. How about how about uh, QuickBooks? QuickBooks, thank you. <laughs> a little bit, not not a lot, but I'm a quick learner. I love to learn. I see in uh, your uh, resume with the working with the Social Security, you had a lot of things you uh, had to do. Yes. How did you keep all of those things organized and make sure you got them all done? Prioritizing. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. It's it's an excessive amount of work, um, which is why I became burnout. <laughs> um, so every day you have to set your you know, your priorities, what is the most important things to do today. Um, but also, I personally, we had different workloads that we had set goals for by the agency. So if it was a goal that was a year end goal or a weekly goal or a monthly goal, you have to set time aside for that particular workload. Um, but, you know, things happen. Um, I also interviewed all day long. So there was a maybe an hour, hour and a half. I worked a lot of overtime, <laughs> a lot of overtime to make sure that all the work was done. And to be quite honest, I think I never, ever left the office and ever had all of my work done. Just an unimaginable amount that was, that was there. So, um, but you just, you have to prioritize what is the most important thing. So is, you know, sending out that letter the most important thing, or is it paying someone that's dying of cancer the most important thing? So you weigh that, and that's what you do that day. Mm -hmm. But, you know, sometimes you fail. Um, so you kind of step back and reassess, and what could I have done differently and learn from that? What have you done to find out information about trailer estates? I went on the website and read everything. <laughs> you read so everything? I yeah. did. I did. I like oh, yeah. when are you going to take the test? <laughs> <laughs> Give it to me now. <laughs> no, I I did because I wanted to find out, you know, kind of it it like I said, it runs very differently from the community that I currently work for. Um, so it was interesting to come to the board meeting. I appreciate that. That was very enlightening. So Cope so. excuse me, Cope Communities is is it it's a uh HOA or it's a uh, I mean, it's corporately run. Okay. There is an HOA group there, but the only um, the only thing that they actually do is negotiate lot rent. Okay. So, and, and that's not done successfully. All right. You say you say you want to run your own community. Um, have you done anything to get licensed, a CAM license, or I have registered for the license? CAM for the CAM licensing. You, what? I'm registered for the CAM licensing class through Gold Coast. So, and I've started on the materials, but to be quite honest, currently I work four jobs. So I have three other jobs other than my daytime job. So time is not readily available. If, if to you do were that. to come here, would you maintain four, the, no. the other three jobs? No, <laughs> I would not, but my wage where I'm currently at is not a livable wage. Okay. So um, I want to go back to something you said quite a bit earlier. Sure. How did you approach dealing with the land lease deficiencies? You talked about it being 40,000 in the hole for mm -hmm. a couple of years, it took you two years and now it's, mm -hmm. it's all current. How did you deal with it? Because there's probably some pretty unhappy campers. Oh yeah. That you had to deal with. Can you expand sure. on that? Sure. Um, sorry. I, um, I first did a spreadsheet. I love spreadsheets and just try to find a pattern. Was it the same people every month? Was there someone that had been paying rent for timely and then all of a sudden they weren't paying? Um, and then reached out to those people and to find out, is there something that's going on? Is there a way that we can help? Is it a budget issue? Is it a spouse that died that handled the finances and they've never had to do that? And so, you know, pretty consistently, that was pretty much what it was. There was a spouse that had always handled finances and then all of a sudden they were gone. And the person was just trying to figure it all out. So um, 
on my own personal time, I kind of met with them and just gave them some pointers and different things to try to look at. Um, but also I identified the fact that we never sent out letters in the past to people to say, hey, you owe this um, and you have to pay it. And if you don't pay it, there's repercussions for that. And then actually, you know, sent them five day demand notices and posted them to the doors. And when that time period was up, then I sent an intake form to the to the attorney. Um, and after a while, that you know, got around pretty quickly that we were serious. And it comes again accountability. So you've uh, you've entered into a lease and you've agreed to do this. You're going to pay this. Then we expect payment. Um, and and now you know after the hurricane. Um, Ian came, we had quite a bit of damages. So we've had um, several uh, residents that have had to unfortunately turn over their titles um, and leave, which was very, very unfortunate. And some people that just are trying to weigh the cost of fixing their home up to community standards and requirements or pay their rent. So I've been working with corporate to try to um, make sure that we're meeting those needs of the community. Um, but yeah, it, for the most part, it came down to just identifying what the problem was and then trying to rectify that and, and hold people accountable for what they've agreed to pay. So yeah. I did the opposite. I went out and looked at co-communities um, to learn yeah. about them and, and the job that you had there like you did with sure. our website. Sure. So when you said 534 homes, I immediately knew that you work for Camelot Lakes and not Camelot East Village. Yes. Is that true? That okay. Is correct. Um, and you said you had multiple jobs. So in addition to working at Camelot Lakes Village, what else are you doing? I'm, uh, I grade papers for an online school. So I do that remotely. Okay. Um, I'm a server and then also clean houses. Okay. And Airbnbs. Yeah. So I, I, by going out to the website, I did, um, see that it's a leased land mm -hmm. uh, versus a deeded. So deed restrictions are something that you it's don't have. Um, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And do they have rules and regulations and, yes. and that people have yeah. to follow? Do they have to sign them when they yes. lease there that they'll follow them? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how, do you have direct reports currently? Or are you? Uh, uh, oh. No, just okay. me. Just you? <laughs> just me. Just you. <laughs> Um, uh, I mean, the maintenance team reports to me and the community manager's absent. So she's absent quite a bit. Okay. They, they report to me and I handle all of their work orders, maintenance requests. Okay. Um, how do you handle finances? For, it's a corporate owned, so you don't do budgets. You don't do any no, kind of work all on of that. that's done okay. with the, with the okay. corporation. Um. Let's see, I have for questions. Oh, in your uh, resume, it says your skill set is uh, contract negotiations. Um, what's an example of a contract that you um, negotiated? Um, I was part of the um, American Federation for Government Employees negotiating team for their four year contract as a union representative. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, labor contract. Labor contract. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it also says uh, records organization and management. Um, do you have a system that you developed or a system that you use to organize records? Now I do. <laughs> yeah. There, yes. Um, because the records weren't being kept or audited or anything. Um, so now I have a very set written process for anybody else that was to come in. Um, also for corporate to see that there are specific steps being taken to make sure that the records are current and okay. up to date and then um, compliant with our regulations. Excellent. Uh, whole community, community, solve complaints and issues. Okay. Oh. Put your microphone closer or <laughs> turn it on, one of the two. <laughs> that will make a difference. I was off too. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, okay. better. Sorry. So what's an example of a, a complaint or issue in the community that you resolved and how did you resolve it? So one of the one that comes to mind immediately is we have a renter that was doing work in the community 
um, without being licensed or insured Mm. and not approved by the office. And um, especially right after the hurricane, he was um, charging astronomical amounts of money and bragging about it. So I staked him out, found him, got him right in that, took pictures, reported him, had some words with him. It stopped. (laughs) Yeah. I'm pretty proactive about that. If there's, I, I think that if we would, we get so many complaints all the time. Some of them are valid. Some of them aren't. Um, some of it's just neighbors disputing and, you know, whatnot. So I think it's important that you go out into the community and see exactly what's going on. Um, and then just, you know, having a conversation with somebody can eliminate a lot of ongoing issues. Um, and, you know, ha- like I said, it's it's the same thing with an employee. If they people come in and they sign a lease, and how many of them actually read it? How many of them actually read the rules and regulations? Um, and sometimes it's just as simple as letting them know that that's a violation, and they're like, "Oh, I didn't realize that," and it can stop with that. You know, it can be that simple, um, or kind of letting them just know. Um, how it's affecting other people. Sometimes they, people live in a bubble and they don't really realize that their actions are, you know, hurting other people or affecting other people. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty not, I don't want to say confrontational, but I don't have a problem confronting people when it comes to an issue or a complaint and just, you know, trying to get to the bottom of it and come out with a, with a resolution for both parties. Having sitting set uh, through our board meeting and our mm-hmm. workshop today, <laughs> and having thanks for going through the She's pain. She's still here. <laughs> yeah, I'm starving. And, uh, by the way, and what we read with the uh, what would be what we would expect uh, of you from uh, with the job. What do you see as maybe the first issue as a as a manager you would attack? Um, the trustee responsibilities. You all have a lot of responsibilities. Um, and um, trying to alleviate some of those or make them more. It seems that there's um, some of you that maybe have more quantity of responsibilities than others. So trying to make that a little bit more even, um, but also taking some of that pressure off of your all's roles. Guys are volunteers. So it sounds like y'all all have your hands pretty full and a lot of time with this. Um, which is great and commendable for for doing that, but um, definitely reevaluating those responsibilities and and making sure that there are some um, some oversight to that. So it sounds like there's just listening to the job descriptions when you all were saying there's a bunch of stuff on there that I'm not doing, but there's a bunch of stuff on there that I am doing. Um, kind of maybe quarterly going through that and seeing that that is. It remains consistent and reevaluating it as needed. So are you familiar with the sunshine law for districts? No, I am not. I'll learn it though. That's <laughs> that's something we all learn. The only way we talk is right mm-hmm. here. Yeah. Whether it be in a workshop or even in the real meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, so sometimes we don't know just what each one of us is doing because we can't talk about it. Right. But we get to hear about it as we're having a meeting. Right. And so Which is why they're hours long. That's right. okay. <laughs> and there also becomes an issue if you talk to me and then you go and you talk to mm-hmm. Russell, you right. can't say Lori said mm-hmm. right. because you become a conduit to a sunshine law violation. Because yeah. it all for us, it all has to be here in in the, in the sunshine. In I the like sunshine. it. In, in the in sunshine. The sunshine. I like that though. If you think about it. I, I like that because yeah. I think that that's good that there's not side conversations going on. You know, to be honest, when you're running a community this size. Vanessa, um, you've had a, a, a lot of different job responsibilities. I'm overwhelming. But how do you <laughs> handle interruptions when you're doing something and someone stops you and just says, how do you handle that? What's your, what's your mode of operation? Um, I mean, most of the time, if unless it's something that's extremely time sensitive, if it can wait, then the residents are first. They're always first. Um, You know, at the end of the day, and I've kind of um, established a a system of when I do the 
when I run the checks at night or do the deposits and whatnot, um, the residents know, all right, those last 20 minutes of the day are kind of off limits with her, <laughs> unless it's something that just absolutely can't wait. Um, but I don't mind to be interrupted. I can pick, by, pick right back up where I was at and, you know, deal with it. And I think you got to be flexible. Um, if you're not flexible, then <laughs> nothing is ever going to get done. So um, things come up. These are people's lives. So I think that has to always be the number one motivator and the goal for your day is to keep that in mind. So it may not seem important to you at the time, but it's important to them. It's important enough for them to come and talk to you and want something done about it. And, you know, if it's not urgent or life-threatening or um, something that's going to that can wait till the next day, then you just have to say that. Right. Say, listen, I've got a busy day today and I promise you tomorrow I'm going to, I'm going to look at it first thing and I'll give you a call back or come out and check it out. So being honest and upfront with them. Sometimes they just want to know that somebody is actually going to do something. That they are being heard. I want to ask a question about the family law on your resume. I um, that. Completed uh, coursework in addiction and family law. What's, mm -hmm. what's the family law part? The family law would be um, divorce and custody issues. Um, so when I was in college, I had a professor that had actually um, developed a program for the community that anybody that was going through a divorce and there was children involved, that they had to go through this coursework and program um, to learn about co-parenting. That was a term that wasn't around really back then. <laughs> she was she was um, just instrumental in making sure that families stayed um, communicating and kept a positive environment, whether it was um, learning how to trade off the kids on different custody arrangements or um, really in uh, domestic violence situations and keeping the victims safe, um, but also in compliance with court orders. Vanessa, I see in your background that you have experience with researching grants. Yeah. Do you have experience in grant writing? Some. Some. It was a okay. long time ago, but yes. Right. <laughs> Yes. Um, so one of the things that I did when I was at Blue Ridge Independent Living Center, I was an independent living coordinator. So I worked with different community agencies that um, we would collaborate services for individuals to help them to live independently. So that could be anybody that um, had a severe disability, um, whether it was mental or physical, um, or with the elderly, it could be brain injury. So we would look at you know, agency on aging, brain injury services, mm -hmm. um, making sure places were ADA compliant, providing job services, job coaching like, type of thing. So I've always been in the, with, with Social Security. Um, I also uh, collaborated with the um, with the homeless initiative to make sure that people had proper services um, to help them find permanent housing. Um, and one of those things, even though it seems small, is making sure their benefits, um, social security card, that they have a social security card. They went through that process, um, making sure if they um, that they knew their reporting responsibilities, that their checks didn't get stopped when it came back returned. You know, some, it could be as simple as that. Um, and, and I also worked on a memorandum of understanding with Virginia Department of Corrections and the regional jails in Virginia to get um, soon to be released prisoners, their social security cards and driver's license, so that they had those at the time that they were released. They could at least have one step forward in the right direction. So, worked with a lot of different community agencies. Do we have any other questions? Okay. 
All set. Thank you very much Thank for you your all. responses and Thank taking you. the time out for your interview today. I'll get something to you. Uh, I, I'm going to. <laughs> I'm from the country. We like to. And before, I bring in, before we bring in the next one, I absolutely have to take a five-minute break. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't have drank some coffee. <laughs> Please, please turn off your microphones. And we're going to talk. I didn't have my phone. I didn't have it on. It's on now.
Yes, Great. Everybody, please turn on your microphones so we don't have, so it can get recorded. Yep. And our next applicant is Dottie Deerwester. If you would, please uh, do your introduction to the audience and those that are listening on 732 and just a little bit about yourself. Okay. And you might want to pull that microphone closer. Yeah, there you go. Good afternoon. You've had your marathon meeting today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My name is Dottie Deerwester. I live at 1804 Ohio. Uh, we purchased in the park in 2015 and we became full-time residents in 2018. I'm retired Air Force after 21 and a half years. And my uh, experience goes back 30 plus years working with nonprofits, government agencies, community service agencies, networking with all the above to make my programs work. And my educational background, I have a, a PhD in business administration. Uh, would you describe your ability to develop and maintain effective working relationships between employees and uh, the managers? My. Your ability. My ability to develop a working relationship. Mm -hmm. With the various organizations that I have worked with, uh, from very small nonprofit organizations to a large um, county and uh, educational facility is very important to listen to the individuals, to hear their perspective, to be able to ask questions as well as to provide my input to it, and to, in some cases, act as a liaison between the individuals and the program. Um, and because the bottom line for me is to hopefully have a win-win situation, and you can't do that if it's my perspective only. I'm not a shy person, which I think you all know. And I'm willing to give my perspective, but I also believe that my skills in bringing people together toward a common goal is there. I have demonstrated it <clears throat> and to make programs work. That doesn't mean I always have a yes, doesn't mean I always agree, but you're willing to have the conversation. And would you give me uh, some examples of your leadership skills? Um, couple of examples. On my Vita, I put down a, a summary of my various job experiences. And a couple of examples that I would like to bring is when I was pro a program coordinator with the Navajo Nation Department of Social Welfare, my job was to work with, and the Navajo Nation, their communities are called chapters. And there's 108 chapters on the reservation, ranging from Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah. And my job was working with a grant funded program, supervising three other staff and coordinating with each one of the chapters, chapters to develop, to provide presentations about child abuse prevention on the reservation. And that took a lot of coordination with um, some very traditional people living on the reservation, as well as bringing in the influence of non-traditional people and to make that work for both. So the leadership skills I had, again, was to listen to them, provide them with the information in a broad perspective and listen to what they needed because that was imperative in that program. Another example is um, as executive director of 24 hour residential facility for battered women, <laughs> substance abuse and child abuse programs. I worked and provided management to volunteers, staff, and board of directors. And so my leadership skills and my leadership involved, again, bringing those, bringing to the board what we needed from the program, talking to the community, doing fundraising, uh, doing presentations for grant writing, getting money donated to us, getting volunteers to support the program that we couldn't afford to pay for staff, and being able to talk to and work with 24 hour staff to meet the needs that they had when they're working midnight shifts in a program like that, they really need to be supported. But my role was to support them in addition to all my other 
uh, jobs as a manager. And that was one of my questions under your summary. Uh, could you explain how you develop and manage organ organizational wide grant and contract related budgets? So one of my jobs was with the Mendocino County Office of Education. I was hired specifically as a grant administrator to work with, and if you're familiar with offices of education, there's a wide variety of programs that they, they um, get funded for through the state and county. And my job was to work with each of the programs to develop a process for writing grants. When you write grants, it can be, I can write the audience version of a grant, but that doesn't really help the program because I need to hear from them on how, what they need from their program. So my role was to develop the, the infrastructure for grant writing. You have your fiscal person, you have your program person, you have your administrative person, and bring all that together as a team to do the grant writing. Once the grants were funded, then my job was to help manage the grant um, outcomes. You have to meet certain goals. You have to follow the budget. You can't spend it on anything you can't spend it on unless you have prior permission. All of those rules um, are tied to the grants because they typically are state or federal funded grants, but there could be some foundation grants and they have as many rules as a state and um, county might have. So my role was to make sure that when a report was due, first of all, be timely about it. Don't be late. They don't like that. And make sure all the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed, the questions are answered, and that you have shown that you've spent the money in the way you're supposed to spend the money. And what I basically asked myself on, on your summary uh, is just to explain each one of them. Uh, we've already gone over, but uh, I looked at identified and developed short and long range project goals the objectives task to finish with who, how, how did you do that? And with whom? Well, what's the question? It, one of the items that you put under your uh, summary listing is identified and developed short and long range project goals. How did you do that? And with who? Oh, well, first, okay. First, um, let me find what I wrote up. <laughs> Um, first, um, I would review, this is after they are funded, what you're talking about, right? The program? No. It's on, it's on the summary. Uh, you're under probably, the I'm summary. sorry, third under bullet this. down under your summary. Um, oh, managerial. Uh, managerial experiences. Okay. You've identified... Uh, that you develop short and long range project goals, objectives, uh, tasks from start to finish. Okay, sorry. With who did you do that with and how did you do that? I would first review the funding and the other resources that might be available for the program. Identify a timeline to meet certain funding goals. So if they get a report every three months and you had certain things you had to complete, then that would be on a timeline. So it'd be a calendar timeline. And it would be and divide that up into who is responsible for doing that. So if it was a program report and it was due every quarter, there's a program report and the contract said you had to do X, Y, Z, then that program person would be the one to write the report. The finance person would be the one to write the finance report. And sometimes they were the same people. Sometimes it was me helping write it. And then if there were other components of that funding source, as an example, then all of those would be drafted together. And my role was to synthesize them together and provide that overall report to the funding, the contract administrator. There always was a person, somebody else that I would have to report to um, or with any questions or clarifications on the funding source. So they were timeline based. They were identified basically by the A, B, C, D, whatever was required. And then those obligations were met based on a timeline and, by, and who would be doing that. So that I would get the reports back early enough, not the day that it was due to the funding source, 
but a timeline to get it to me to sit down with them and review it, write it up, and then do the whole report. Okay. Um, this is really a stupid question. I know the answer, but I've asked everybody else that. Just what's your computer skills? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Gotta ask. Yeah, I, I like that one. I was hoping you'd ask that question. I even wrote up an answer. No. <laughs> um, my I use Microsoft Office products such as Excel, uh, uh, PowerPoint, what are the other Office products? Um, Word, Excel. Yeah, Excel. Um, Word. Word. Oh, for sure, Word. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Publisher to do flyers and things like that. And um, I'm familiar with uh, using Zoom. I've also trained on how to use Zoom. I'm familiar with using, mostly with Zoom. There are other products out there for online communication. Um, conference call is another one I have used. Uh, the, I used to use like ACT, which is an old database. Well, called old, I don't use it anymore, but it is still a Microsoft product. I don't use that and haven't used that in years. Um, but what, what about QuickBooks? Well, QuickBooks, oh, that was the other one. I'm familiar with QuickBooks. I'm not an expert. I'm not licensed in QuickBooks. They actually do have a license for that. Mm -hmm. I am familiar with the reports that come out of it. I also realize the reports that come out are as good as what is put in. <laughs> and um, um, and so they can do the profit and loss statements and other kinds of you know uh, invoices other kinds of uh, product. So, um, Dottie, having been a resident and a very involved resident in the park, I've got to, I got to be perfectly honest with you. One of my concerns is I see a person every day that's very involved. You're very involved with the computer club. You mentioned today that sometimes when you're working with a resident on a printer problem, you're there for hours. You're involved with the Veterans Club. Um, you're involved with the Travel Club. Um, I, I see with your Facebook postings, you do a lot of traveling and I envy you like you wouldn't believe for the traveling that you do. One day I'm going to get to that point where I'm going to be able to do some traveling. And now you're interested in a job that's going to be at a good day, a good week, 40 hours with possible evening on call, weekend issues. Um, I'm just, I, I mean, gosh. Um, well, I believe in, so how am I going to do that? Yeah, I'm thinking, right. yeah, I'm, I'm right. thinking, wow. <laughs> so I believe in having other, I don't believe that I should be the president of the computer club forever. I've already, before I even decided to do this, because I had to think about those kinds of things, because I like being involved and active. And yeah. I've already told them I'm not going to be president next year. If I do tech assistance, it's on the weekend or evenings. And I didn't know anything about this at that point in time. Mm -hmm. But the tech assist kind of tasks are as available as for all of our tech assists. It would never be during the work hour. Um, if I'm selected for this position, this is the position. These other things are, are secondary to it. Obviously, it would curtail the travel. Mm -hmm. That's the way to go. Um, and... The other clubs, I'm not as actively involved. The Veterans Club has already been delegated okay. to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, yeah. and because I believe the park needs to be involved. It's not a Dottie Club or a Gordon Club or whatever. It's a park club. Yeah. And so we need to get other people involved in doing that. And that's been my goal with these clubs. The other clubs I'm not that involved in. I'm a member of them, like the Yacht Club, but mm -hmm. I'm not that involved with them. Okay. My main question is right along the, the same line. This would be the priority. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, no one, no one, so many people in the park yeah. feel you're going to be able to be objective on on issues. How, yes. how are you? How are you going to be objective on issues whenever you you know have lots of friends in the park? Well, I don't know if lots of friends. I know a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, lots of people in the park. I think. Friends. I think actually, it's a plus to know people in the park knowing how the park functions, or at least from my perspective, not from the perspective behind you guys, but from my perspective, knowing how the park 
operates, knowing how to go about, do the rules and different things to get things done is a plus because I can hit the ground running and not have to learn all of that. Knowing people in the park, there will be um, I, a plus, I think a skill I have is to be objective. I don't push people. You have to think Dottie's way. I believe in listening to them. And there are going to be some people who are going to be confrontive um, and have to learn, have to remember, not learn, remember it's not personal. I can't imagine some of the things that you guys have come up against. And so I think that I have to constantly remind myself if I'm a park um, manager, that's a role and responsibility to the trustees in addition to the members of the park. It's not dotty. Okay, so the rules of what the board puts out there is going to be the job of the park manager to be part of that in whatever way it works out. Take your uh, resident and forget about it for now. Put, put a park manager hat on. What do you see as a park manager, what your biggest issue would be today? I think my answer might be a little different than what you might think it might be. Um, I think the biggest issue for a park manager would be delineation of what the trustees, there's nine of you, nine opinions of what they want the park manager to do. And that's going to be a challenge on both sides to come to some kind of arrangement or what, I mean, if, if you want the park manager to take over all of the code enforcement things, then you're doing 90% of your job and you're not being a park manager. Okay. So There's going to be different kinds of things that's going to be directed to the park manager. The most important thing would be to get to know the staff which asked what was the most important thing now, right? To know this, get to know the staff, their perspective on things, because part of the park manager's job is to learn from them. You are coming up and talking about changes, all kinds of changes, which will affect them to some degree. Um, the changes the trustees make will affect the trustees, will affect the park, will affect who the park residents go to or whatever product, whatever job whatever complaint, whatever it is that they want to go to. So I think the first thing is facing the park manager is to bring all that together and have a path, a direction. It's going to take a little bit of time to do that. The chairman of the board is very important in that because that's going to come in part from the trustees. Yeah. <clears throat> Daddy, in, in your thought process, what's the difference that the park manager would be versus what the trustees are handling as far as neighborhood disputes? Hmm. How, how would it be different? How would it, it be, different? how would it be different for the park manager to handle neighborhood disputes? I think part of that comes down to what the role of the North and South trustee is and how the park manager interacts with that. If, if the board decides that's the job of the park manager, then I'd be learning from the trustees. First of all, I don't think it should be their job. I like what you guys are doing. I think there's an administrative background, administrative support that can help make your jobs easier than I have thought of. Um, but to take on that task, I may have to go talk with someone. A trust, trustee says you need to go talk to so and so about whatever it is. Then my job would be to go do that and help resolve the issue. And I don't know really what the job is yet. Okay. What do you think the job should be? Hmm. Sorry. Did I write it's that one down? <laughs> <laughs> I think the job should in part be to provide administrative support to the trustees because you have a wide variety of different jobs. Using technology, I think things can be made a little bit easier. 
Um, again, that's a perspective of the person doing it. And I like technology and I think that would help the trustees do their work. Um, I think there may be some tasks that, that you decide is the responsibility of the manager to do in lieu of a trustee. I don't know what those would be at this point in time, but I think there needs to be a, an understanding so that there's not confusion. There was a conversation I listened to on one of the board meetings that was talking about what does the um, maintenance manager report to you, to, to your trustee, right. or to the park manager? And there was discussion about that. And I thought, oh, no, they can't report to two people because that's setting up for a disaster. Right. Okay. And usually at the expense of the employee, somewhere there's going to be something that happens. And we don't want that to happen. And at the same time, there could be a delineation of duties after talking with the trustee, if the park trustees decide to go this way, to say, okay, I can do this, I can manage that, I can do the administrative, but keep in the loop. I don't want someone coming to me and then going to you for permission to do something that's their job. Right. You know, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And we need to be careful about that, that people don't get caught up in the middle of that. And I think the biggest challenge for the next probably several months is to, to delineate what you don't want to do. You prefer to have someone else do because it'll be easier, more efficient, et cetera. Does that answer your question? I see so. on your resume, you were a first sergeant in the Air Force Reserve. Yes. And some of us with our experiences with first sergeants know what a hard line they uh, they dealt and uh, their management style was uh, rather unique at times. How do you see uh, your experience with the uh, as a first sergeant and being a park manager? <laughs> well. First of all, I was an Air Force first sergeant, not an Army first sergeant. Oh, so you were easy kind. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke among us veterans, you know. Okay, so as of, I don't know if you know what a first sergeant is. A first sergeant is part of the upper management of a squadron with a military unit. You have your commander, you have your chief, which is usually in a top level E9, and then you have your first sergeant, and they work as a team to coordinate the unit and the members within the unit. So my role oftentimes was the disciplinarian. Someone, a person does something wrong and they'd have to go see the shirt, the first sergeant, and they usually, oh, oh, you're in trouble kind of thing. And that wasn't always the case, but my job was disciplinarian and helping correct it. But the part of the job I liked the most was I was able to work with the individuals to fix the problem with their family or their job so they weren't in trouble. Because you don't want to lose good people. You want to work with them. So it wasn't always bad. Um, I wasn't one to make them stand up against the wall and do whatever the Army might do. Uh, <laughs> and that's the Army. Um, um, so, so the skills are very similar. The environment is different. Dottie, since you're a resident here and you're so involved, you know that we have struggled as a board to improve our ways of communication. Um, so if you were selected to be park manager, what suggestions would you give to the board or implement to improve communication within the residents? That is such a tough job. <laughs> I think I think the park and the decisions of the trustees have come a long way in improving communication. You can't, what is the saying? You can provide water, but you can't make, uh, you can lead the horse, lead a horse water, around, you can't, you can't make, make it drink. And we have Zoom. Granted, COVID helped promote that. I think the computer club helped promote getting technology as well. But you have Zoom, you have YouTube, you have a meeting. People have an opportunity to come in and listen and to provide their input. I'm constantly on Facebook, 
and on the TEU Friends and in person, you know, telling people, come to the meeting. They come to me with a complaint. They want me to fix the complaint. No, I'm not going to fix it for you. You need to come and voice the complaint. First of all, I don't want to be the only voice making comments at public meetings. They need to come and have their face shown. Oh, no, no I'm not going to do that. Well, if it's not important enough to speak about it, maybe it's not important enough to do anything about it. So I think, I think between the technology, 732, Zoom, the meetings, the Tribune, I know there's no Facebook. I think there could be a park only Facebook that's informational only and no input from anybody at all, period. And there is a way to do that. Then the meeting could be posted on there, reminders and things like that. People could join or follow, they'd follow actually. The Facebook, that'd be one more step. I know there's been resistance to doing that, but if it was no comment, because we can't do that, um, and be careful with the sunshine law, the, they wouldn't provide input to it. They can't provide comment, informational only. That might be something. Mark does a really good job in getting word out. Can you give me your knowledge on the Florida statutes regarding parks and recreations? As far as what authorizes it, I know it's the Florida legislation, it's a statute. Chapter 189. <laughs> <laughs> the board of directors is appropriate who is that for and hiring excuse me hiring and firing of this last page uh, i'm sorry last paragraph on the first page made recommendations too so if the board so the board of directors if they if it was their final authority to terminate someone or to hire someone, then I would do all the preliminary work. If, I'm, if it's firing someone, which is never an easy thing to do, um, then I would have usually follow a progressive disciplinary action and then make a recommend. And then if it's my job, I had the authority to terminate, I would do that. But if I had to go to the board, then I would make that recommendation and then report. If I made the decision, and report back to the board of directors. And then it also says that you uh, included writing position descriptions, evaluations and stuff. Is this with the Air Force? No, this is no. Private? The Air Force gave their own, they, they decide your job. <laughs> um, the, this is the, the nonprofits and the governmental agency. So for example, when I worked for the Mendocino County Office of Education, one of my jobs was to develop a phlebotomy course that was licensed by the state. So I needed to write the job description based on the licensing rules and, um, and then help set up the curriculum so that the students would be able to pass their test for a phlebotomy. That included um, the uh, proposed sal recommending salary as well as what the um, the license for the instructor would be, and then verification. And can you describe how you've uh, developed your annual, I'm sorry, developed uh, annual fiscal budgets? Input from other departments. So um, actually it's very similar to what Mary's doing now, I do believe that the different programs would, would take a look at their past budget or their past expenditures Really, they may have a budget, but they may have spent more in certain line items than what they expected. Then they would propose the new year based on what they project their program would look like. And then they'd put the budget together. Sometimes they would use the, the fiscal person to help do that. But then all that would come together in a proposed budget. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Anybody financial? 
Anything in there? Mm -hmm. nope. None. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for taking the time for. Thank you for the opportunity. You still cold? I am still cold. Yes, I'm shivering. I don't know how to turn that on. Off that vent. Oh. I, I think we're all just tired and hungry. hungry. I think that's what it is. We're just hungry. It's not the heat. It's just us. It's just we're. Okay. Thank you, Dottie. Yeah. Uh, no. Us too. Yeah. Order yeah. pizza. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now uh, the next one we have is uh, Christopher Allen Shoemaker. Do I have the right? Uh, yes, sir. Wayne. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. No. Well, oh, if you would, yeah. I'd like to have you leave yeah. so I can just. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I don't. Mind. I didn't. I didn't see her sit down. How do you say that? You know. <laughs> just like that. Long day. Yes, dude. Okay. Okay, if you would, uh, please introduce yourself to the audience as well as the people that we have on Zoom or uh, Channel 732, our private community, and then just tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, Chris Shoemaker, and uh, I was uh, raised in Clearwater, and uh, I've spent time on the West Coast, and uh, professionally, I... Um, my background is strong in public utilities and government. I really started my career working in the House and Senate in Tallahassee. Um, worked in the legislature committee staff, and I worked for a senator also. Hmm. And uh, I've been in government for a while, so I went down and I um, went to work for an engineering firm for a short period of time, but I worked for Hernando County Utilities for 10 years, um, local government. But I got involved with a lot of things even outside of the utilities department. And uh, after being there, I tried to uh, went to work for some developers in Orlando, Dr. Horton, and also in Tampa Parkview Homes. And it was kind of the same, a lot of the same things that I did for the county because I handled a lot of their real property and entitlements and developer agreements. And uh, was very similar. I really enjoyed the work, but my timing wasn't too good because I made that switch right before the crash in 2008. So, uh, for the development group I was working for wanted to keep me on, but at that point, all they were doing was workouts with the banks and uh, listening to unhappy customers because they didn't have anybody on staff to do warranty work on their new houses because they didn't have any money. Um, and they I uh, made a switch and, and went um, over to Sebring and went to work for a large landowner there. Um, a lot of water resources background um, projects they were working on there, but um, probably the fifth largest landowner in the state and their ranch over there, and it was all family owned, was 350,000 acres. It was about 62 miles from one end to the other, but it was a little different because I was working in a glass tower in Orlando. And then all of a sudden, I'm at a blinking light between Okeechobee and Lake Placid. And the only <laughs> thing for 20 miles was that blinking light. Oh. Um, and the cowboys there were real cowboys. Um, but a lot, of, a lot of water resources work going on. We started a utility company there. And we were also doing um, development uh, permitting entitlements for some future projects they had going on there. And it really wasn't a lot different because I said, when you're in a public utility and sunk a lot of wells and water quality testing but i go so what's the difference you got a well you got a big pipe it goes to a smaller pipe and instead of going to a house it's this is going to an orange tree mm -hmm. uh, they had 18 000 acres of grove so it was really going into old florida old rural cows cattle orange tree florida and uh, i really enjoyed it good employer um but i i left there 
um, after about nine years and uh, it was a good job and they treated me very well, but um, just time to try something different. So I went over to Fort Myers and uh, became the general manager for the Gateway Community Development District, which is a special district, um, 4,000 acres, uh, 4,300 homes and uh, large commercial presence there too. So you're running a district like that, you're really doing everything because, you know, we had a landscaping contract and soccer fields, uh, the roads and streets were private, the street lights were, the drainage system. We had a stormwater system that had 68 interconnected ponds and ended up after going out through a bunch of flowways to the Gulf. Um, very, very nice community. And got some good boots on the ground experience too when Hurricane Irma came through <laughs> because it went right over the top of us. Mm -hmm. uh, and so got involved with some recovery work there, emergency response. You know, we had no power um, for in some parts of the community for five to seven days. And uh, the utility was. CDD's utility, so that became a little problematic with lift stations and pump stations and wells and things like that. But we got through through it all pretty well. But uh, that storm did uncover a lot of weaknesses in the drainage system and other parts of the community. And uh, I was there for five years. Uh, same thing. I thought it was time to move on. Uh, the board didn't care for that too much, and they offered me uh, and gave me a three-year contract and a 20% raise. And three months later, I resigned, oh. and they were kind of shocked. And I said, I told you before, I was planning on leaving. I go, after five years, it's probably time for somebody new to take over. But uh, good job. A lot of experience working with FEMA, working with the county. And um, so I went over to work at... Uh, another CDD in Sebring because I came out of that area that they also had their own utility operation. Uh, 4,200 customers, a couple golf courses, a lot of amenities in the community, nice community for that area. In October, at the end of my first year, they offered me a, a raise and another one-year contract. Uh, three weeks later, the chairman asked me if I was going to sign the contract and I said, no, I gave it a year and I think this is where I want to stay. So, um, officially. How, how would you take the general manager and your district manager at uh, Gateway Services and apply that skills to Trailer States Park and Recreation as a program uh, park manager? Uh, it's probably a microcosm. You know, when you're, when you're dealing with the CDD, and it was interesting here just watching your meeting this morning, because after a little while, I said, these aren't like board members. These are like employees. <laughs> I mean, the work you're doing, and it's not all recreation, obviously, when you're doing a, you know, million five loan for a seawall. Um, and I'm sure with uh, being a special district and borrowing money more than five years, you have to have a bond validation. You got That's, it. Hence the law firm getting mm -hmm. involved in lots it. of them. Yeah, circuit court and mm -hmm. you know the whole thing. So so I'm familiar with that. But um really the same thing. You're dealing with street lights and streets and drainage. And you know, that even though a lot of that belongs to the county and not to you, you still get involved with it. I mean, it impacts your community. I thought it was interesting even talking about the street lights earlier when you were this one's on, this one's off. And I think they just charge you a set fee per month for that light, whether the light's on or off. Um, and I was going to say one thing with it, uh, we worked on Gateway is um, one of the developments, Pet Pelican Preserve, they changed out all their bulbs to LEDs on their street lights. Mm -hmm. And then Florida Power gave them a break on that. And it was about a two year payback. Oh, well, they changed ours out, but we didn't get any yeah, payback. Didn't get I mean, they, they came through and changed all the lights out. That's why I'm like, they own the lights. Why are we paying for this? Uh, and, and what, you, what you may find, and I saw with Florida Power, is, you know, like you say, you lease the poles. When those lease terms come up, they aren't renewing the Ooh. leases. They're saying, here, it's your pole now. 
Oh, well, I'd, mean, I'd, I'd like to see evidence we even have a lease. I can't we, find anything. Yeah. We haven't yeah. found a contract yet. Oh, we can't find anything. So I anyway, mean, we're, we're, um, back in the yeah, day, or that's yeah, just the way they did contract. things and sorting that out. It's going to yeah. be, but I, I've seen that with CDDs and they basically yeah. say, no, we're not going to charge you for the lease anymore. Here, you can have the poles. Yeah. Well, we don't really want them. <laughs> and it's like, well, we're not going to pay to replace them. That's why we're giving them back to you giving them to you so that's a real uh minefield there when you're dealing with that um so if we could uh sure, just yeah. give me some examples of your leadership skills basic basically i try to uh, it's almost like being a ringmaster and i try to build an organization when you're working with people you work it from the ground up um, I'm not somebody that sits at a desk and points fingers. You do this, you do that. If you're going to lead, you need to lead by example. And a good example, I think, is during the hurricane. And I stayed at the office for six days, you know, night and day. Of course, a few people said, oh, you're so dedicated. And I'm like, we have a generator in the back. <laughs> we have a gas grill and uh, all these people whose refrigerators didn't work were coming by and dropping off steaks and chicken. So I got a crew together and we were cooking food and whoever wanted it. And at the end of the day, because a lot of the employees didn't have power, we were boxing stuff up and say, here, take this home. Yeah. Here's some hot food. Um, leadership, you have to do it by example. and and. Uh, basically coordinating with people and listening to people. I'm talking a lot up here, but most of the time I'm pretty quiet and I'm listening to what people have to say and trying, trying to get their buy-in on what we're trying to do, but just being sensitive. And then can you, I'm sorry, can you also describe uh, what uh, computer knowledge you have? Uh, I, I work daily, um, you know, with, with computers and laptops and, uh, Excel and budgets, um, project management software. Got involved with the gateway because all their maps were paper. So I got an intern from the college and uh, got together with him and a consultant. And we basically scanned everything and turned it into electronic format and turned it into a GIS system. And, and leadership sometime too is finding better ways to do things like we had soccer fields and the landscaping contract and there our landscape contract was a million three and soccer fields obviously like a golf course high intense and uh, i brought in another consultant who was actually an agricultural turf expert and had him examine all the fields and the fertilizers the nutrients and color-coded maps and then sat down with a consultant and say here's all the areas you're deficit in this is why the turf isn't working right, why it's not recovering. Brought an irrigation expert in there, same thing too, evaluate the system, look at the dispersion, look at the pipe size and, and that information. And when I got it, I didn't go beat the contractors up with it. I sat down with them and said, here's the reports. I want you guys to read this over and see what you think and where there's problems and what we can correct. Are you familiar with uh, QuickBooks? Um, yeah, similar to Excel. I, th I think a lot of people get... Uh, Run run a business with QuickBooks that they don't need to get some of these high price software programs. Yeah, but if you want me to sit sit down and run numbers and basic formulas and you know like some budget work and budget and things like that, I sit down look that over myself, look numbers in and change things and look at. Now looking at your resume, I I had some questions on. Your license and, and certifications, you have here a uh, certified district manager from the uh, Florida Association of Special Districts. When was that? Uh, four years ago, five, 2018. Um, they have a, a week-long class that they do in Tallahassee um, for that. And you also have to uh, get CEUs um, you know, to qualify for that program. Then you have to write a paper, and it's all done through Florida State University. And then you get a certification as a special district manager. Is it still valid? Yes, sir. And when do you have to take the renewal? Uh, the renewal, you have to have the CEUs to do that. There's a small fee. And uh, typically every year, I go to their technical conference in Orlando. And they'll have uh, two days worth of classes. And the first day is typically for district officials to attend. And uh, I'll sit through the first and the second day to get those CEUs. And it's a great refresher, too, because when they give those classes, 
They'll bring in high-end attorneys, high-end insurance people from all those different facets, and they give uh, the presentations to board members and also to people that are working on their certified district manager or their CDM. And what did you do to become the district manager of the year in 2019? I guess I, uh, part of that was um, when I went to Gateway, it was, uh, it needed some help. And uh, uh, on their utility side, their staff was a bit undertrained and underskilled. Um, all facets of their organization basically kind of rebuilt that place, almost like their office was kind of in shambles. It's like, look, redo the floors, let's do the paint. Let's put a new, we put a new office building in the back. Um, started sending the utility staffers, brought the pay up and sending them to formalized uh, training classes to get their skill sets up. Uh, hiring the right people and just kind of changing the whole dynamic of the place. Um, it, it just had a lot of, uh, here's how we've always done it. And, and I kind of talked to the people there after a while. I say, please don't ever say that to me. This is how you've always done it. I'd rather you try something different, fail, you know, then keep doing the same thing because it's, Things change too fast. But I think that uh, some of the people in the FASD and that award was a surprise to me, but uh, saw the way the whole complexion, whether it was dealing with their insurance brokers and looking for prices, whether it was health insurance, I got involved in everything, the landscaping contracts, the stormwater management. We did a $20 million bond validation. And while I was there, borrowed. Uh, $8 million from the state revolving fund, um, get long-term low interest loans to fund those stormwater improvements. And so there wasn't one part of that organization that I didn't touch and kind of rebuild. Also pushed accountability. So with that, can you describe any budget development and capital improvement plans that you've implemented? Um, across the board every year, um, put together, especially the utility side, stormwater side, capital intensive. So sit down with the staff and the department managers. Okay, let's make a priority list. Let's assign a price tag to it. Let's put a budget together. And uh, of course, then when you bring that budget to the board and they look at it and see what it's going to do to their yearly assessment, they about fall out of their chairs. But that's when it's time for the board to make those decisions. And some of them are hard decisions. How are you going to prioritize this? Here's the staff's priority. This is what we're saying, the price tag on it. A political standpoint, what are you willing to look for? What are the residents willing to deal with? And during COVID, that was a tricky juggling act. And with that, I'm assuming you uh, developed your fiscal budgets. Correct. Fiscal budget is the same way on the operations side. And um, it was a little different because in uh, Gateway, they traditionally used a service company um, to handle all their finance work, um, their monthly statements, their financials, their audits, you know, coordinated all that through a service company. And, uh, but the templates all came to us and we filled them in. They generated the final and did part of the presentation on that. And while I was there also um, for funding, I directed, uh, hired a rate consultant, and we increased the connection fees and increased the utility rates because uh, our rates were the lowest of the 13 utilities in Southwest Florida. <clears throat> and I told the board and even the citizens, I said, that's really nothing to be proud of. And we did increase the assessments each year that I was there. Um, but they had a a huge backlog of neglected where they hadn't raised the assessments in like 14 years. So they had a lot of things that were breaking and needed to be reworked and maintained that they hadn't done. So, but uh, one year we brought it up and it was about a $70 increase for that year. And a few people that complained to me, I said, well, skip Starbucks twice a month and you'll be fine. <laughs> but, um, 
a little little different in, in that community too, because you're really looking at higher end housing and gated communities within gated. And most of the people there understood that it was an investment. And uh, I told them my job as a district manager is to preserve housing values or enhance them. And you let your housing values go, probably the biggest asset that you have. And I said, so we're going to argue over that over 70 or $80 a year. But we demonstrated the need. And uh, every year that, that was approved. And uh, didn't get a lot of negative comments about it. We're also very transparent in how we spent the money. You know, this is what we're going to use it for. And we made sure that we uh, had people know the projects we were working on and what they cost. With the certification from the uh, FASD, how would you apply that training with the government's, I'm sorry, with the Florida statutes to trailer estates, park, and recreation? Well, it, it, it's really not different because your your community development districts and your special districts are typically a 189 um, chapter or 190 special districts. So you still have all those statutory requirements and everything else, you know, your sunshine laws, your records retention, it's all the same. I mean, you're, you're running a small local government here. Mm -hmm. And the only problem with that is you have all the trappings of that huge bureaucracy and all that reporting you have to do, but you're a small organization. But one thing too is uh, a lot of a lot of people in special districts didn't understand too is a lot of that federal money and American Rescue Plan and those dollars that were available, special districts could apply for that money too. I'd have to work through the county, but hmm. at Sun and Lake recently, that they never even applied for any of those dollars. The county hmm. got twenty million dollars, and you know, Acid's getting the money, Sebring's getting the money, Avon Park. And like, why didn't we get any? And the county commissioner said we well, should ask for it, but they got about a million two returned. And I went through the back door and met with the. Folks who are running the program met with the county administrator and went to their board of county commissioners and asked them for the money to do $561,000 worth of utility projects. And it was approved on a three to two vote. Are you doing that with Sarasota County? Uh, Highlands. 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 Yes, sir. Highlands, sorry. But any, any, the, the counties were like clearing houses and then the cities would go to them and then they'd bring up that master request for that. How long do you see your expectancy or your performance here at Trailer Estates lasting? Um, professionally, I've held, typically I've held jobs for pretty long terms, um, you know, nine and 10 years in, in positions. Um, I was in the legislature for five years. Um, this last one year stint when I left the first time that's ever happened to me, but um, I think the whole work dynamic has changed so much and it's changed my outlook because it used to be you went to work for a company and you worked for them for 25 years and you retired, mm -hmm. you know, if you had the right spot, Kodak, <laughs> you know, yeah. Corning, um, but a lot of those places aren't around anymore. And, and my outlook on professional development and work like that is should be a three to five year person. You know, your first three years, you're coming in, you're identifying the problems, you're building the relationships, you're addressing those issues. Um, the fourth year, you're fine tuning it. Fifth year, you're basically training your replacement, you know, <laughs> or getting ready to. So, and I also think that it's healthy for a lot of organizations to have a change on a regular basis at the top. That's just my personal and professional outlook. Um, obviously, it would change by the situation, but that would be but that would be my plan or overview. Obviously, things can change. Or you get comfortable, and it's like, yeah, I've been here ten years. I came for two. But. <laughs> been here for eight. Came for two. Can Can I ask? Um, when going back to the what what I don't need to know specifics about what happened in the situation where you only stayed a year, but do you see whatever that situation was coming into play here 
where we might consider hiring you and you only staying a year? Do you see that as a as a possible outcome here? Um, no, that that was a very unusual situation that I was involved in. Um, and part of it. <laughs> it was just difficult for me because uh, you have a utility operation and you're responsible for water and sewer. It's health, safety, welfare for a community of 12,000 people. Right. Um, for years and years, they collected money through a utility infrastructure fund and $6 million to replace that. And their <laughs> board managed to spend more than $5 million of that on their golf course and restaurant that lost money every year. And the, the, infra the infrastructure was literally crumbling. And I said, look, this isn't a golf course that, hey, the turf doesn't look good. This is turning on the spigot. This is right. manholes collapsing. This is, and I don't want to be the face of the place when the regional hospital is out of water or a, a maintenance issue. Right. Um, it, it was just, and there was, there was, I wasn't going to change. Okay. And uh, if I stayed, you're kind of complicit because you're getting on board with that ship. And I said, no, I think I'll, <laughs> and I, I thanked them and I went in there with a good attitude and I left with a good attitude. You can say no. Huh? Well, you, you've managed places way bigger than this. What, <laughs> what? Why that, do you want to come to us? That was going to be my question. I'm like 3,600 residential units, 150 right. room hotel, 149 bed hospital, two golf courses, a restaurant, a thousand home, 55 plus manufacturing. I mean, you're ah. Yeah, it's uh, ah, maybe 16. I need a break. <laughs> so our like, so our little. How do you see value in our little place here that we've got? Hey, part of it is is. Um, Hey, I like this part of Florida. I grew up in Clearwater, and, and uh, when I worked for the Water Management District years ago, I did grant work, um, the, the cost share with a lot of communities, and a lot of you know, I was up in Anna Maria, Stormwater, and I've worked the whole coast in the water, and uh, I like the area, so it's attractive from there. And here, I try to be like value added. Like, what can I bring? that they don't have that would be a value to the board and to the residents. Um, to bring $560,000 into the community over in Sebring of free grant money, the residents <laughs> like that, because otherwise that would have been in their assessment. You wouldn't mind that either, but. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. And there's ways to do it. Not, and it's also, I'm a little <clears throat> unclear because like I said, you, you as a group are like employees here almost. I mean, you, Folks are churning out a lot of work. Um, and I think that's very good, but sometimes you have to look at exposure, liability, other issues. And um, have you had the time to maybe develop relationships with the county and the state for grants, loans, state revolving loan fund, uh, things like that, that I've touched. So I, I like to go to a place where people can make use of my skill set. I don't. Said so I don't like to sit at a desk and point fingers during the hurricane. I was out there at night. I was, you know, helping with manholes, generators moving, talking oh, to the guys, making sure they're in bed, that kind of thing. So it's really just, yeah. does the community want me? Yeah. Um, can I bring value to them where it's better for everybody? Well, speaking of that, what what do you know of our community? Just just everything that I've read in the background and taking a drive around, but. Yeah. Uh, you know, the fact that you're a special district and it's not like an HOA. And I've, I've worked with, we had 40 HOAs within that gateway CDD. And even though we weren't in charge of the HOAs, I ended up working with them. But if I can bring value added and if I'm a good fit for your organization, I think you folks have a lot of uh, camaraderie. and you know, you, Everybody seems to like this aside and work best for our community that's nice to see uh, location 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 yeah <laughs> um and and i hate to say it too it may be that i can be of help because i've been through two hurricanes that had significant impact um, on the community and not only did i work on the response and i'm like literally i was out there 
throwing a chain around a log with the fire department pulling trees off a of gateway boulevard so they could clear it for emergency. <laughs> so, so was I. Definitely, yeah. Over a week. Sounds familiar. <laughs> all the way, all the way till the FEMA paperwork. Yeah. Which, if you can have enough patience and time to deal with FEMA, yeah. Uh, but it's a necessary evil. And and that's one of the things too. People may understand, you know, when you go out there and your signs are knocked down or your trees are over, you know, what you need to do, move it. Well, before you move it, you better get a GPS coordinate off your phone and take a few pictures because when you go to file for that funding reimbursement, if you've cleaned everything up, you're out of luck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, I saw a few HOAs that did that, and I was telling them, no, no, we're gonna go. You guys just need to slow down for a minute. Yeah. And I'll say another thing I stepped into, too, is, is when that hurricane hit Fort Myers, all the uh, debris stations were out toward Lehigh Acres and moving inland because they're always like, oh, well, this coast is going to get killed, so we can't have them out there. But what happened comes in Naples and goes right, right up mm -hmm. through Fort Myers and Lehigh. And one thing afterwards, I talked to the county and worked with their emergency management people because we had 20 acres next to a swimming pool that was open area, high and dry. 300 feet of power line easement behind them and the, their debris site there, they go, oh, we have 40 acres there. And I go, where they're building that brand new high school? And they looked at me and go, they're what? And their emergency management people didn't know they were building a $40 million school that opened two years ago. Wow. But uh, got an agreement together with them. And a couple of my board members said, well, why would you want to do this? I go, well, for one, you'd like to work with the county. And I said, for two, if you have a debris site right here in spotters, it's going to lower our cost to move everything. It's right there. So, so yeah. just, you know, we're a board of nine volunteers right. who bring with us whatever life skills we have uh, before we retired, which, and we try to run the district the best we can with none of us being experts in the jobs. No, I had a finance background. My whole career was finance, but I've never done loans, bond uh, loans. I learned a lot about um, dealing with bond attorneys and uh, referendums and um, uh, that kind of thing. But I mean, I was like thrown into it and I had to, to learn it and I was happy to do it. But we don't know what we're going to get for volunteers. So this is why we need a park manager. We need somebody who can bring the skill set here and make sure the district has what the district needs, regardless of, you know, what you were lucky enough to get for a volunteer who's willing to work 40 plus hours a week for nothing. Well, and, and, um, uh, on the other side of that, all these different programs that you have for residents, besides the recreational and the medical, some of those things, you know, regular CDB or, you know, that type of organization, couldn't come to the forefront. They were like, oh, that's social services. That's, you know, we do amenities. We run the golf and tennis and you know, have yeah. some boat slips. But I think it's great what you're doing. But as you know, being, let's say, a banker today isn't anything like being a banker 20 years ago. I mean, it, it, the insurance, the HR, it, it's such a fast moving um, you, you heard me say we just now got credit card processing in the office. Okay, so this is <laughs> this, and that was a big step for us. So, um, you know, uh, online invoicing, and uh, you know, there's so much room for opportunity here um, if we've got the skill set to bring it on. Um, I I went out and was impressed with your 68 page budget on your on the website. Um, I went, whoa, 68 pages of unbelievable detail. Um, how involved are you in, in this document? What is your role in creating? Right at the front of it. Right, okay. I mean, I'm like a ringmaster. Okay. <laughs> and uh, probably, too, here's the numbers, here's the people you do that. Now, what my role is, is people that live there that pay the assessments, politicians. Getting in the middle of that. Yeah. Yeah. So it becomes a product that's usable. Okay. Um, and looking at your uh, employee population, um, you've got, uh, looks like 
40, or not, I think I wrote it down, 38 employees and a bunch of part-time people. And right. um, so how many of those report directly to you or do you oversee their performance on a daily basis or their job? Are you looking at the Sun Lake budget or the Gateway budget? I'm looking at Sun Lake. Okay. Um, basically, I had to get involved quite a bit more than I thought I would there, but um, what I did also is they had have four major departments, then they had an operations manager that was between the district manager. I eliminated that position. Okay. So I said. You have four direct reports in here. I don't need a middleman. Yeah. You know, between me and them. I matter of fact, I probably should have six or eight direct reports and be dealing with them as department heads. Um, but well, I I mean I'm looking at this okay, general manager, um, finance director. Right. We're, th and, those are going to be combined here. Code enforcement officer. Now we've got three jobs that are going to be one here. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's just a, a lot of support that you have here that is not going to be the situation here in trailer estates. So we're going to expect this person to wear a lot of hats. Uh, um, and there's nowhere to go but up, okay? Because we don't know what we don't know. You're talking about getting involved in funding and FEMA grants, and we've done none of that because we just, we wish we, yeah, we just don't have the skill set or the experience or the knowledge to even know that those exist. Um, and I'll make a point too on part of that. It's a little different because when I, first day I started, when I came into Sun and Lake, the interim district manager came in and said, Finance officer, the APAR person, and the HR person resigned Friday and walked out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. And they have a history of turnover. And I'm like, okay, interesting. Yeah. And and they said, well, what are you going to do about that? Better hire some people. And you know how hard it is to hire people and have been recently. And I brought in a management company, the same one I used in Gateway to take it over. Mm -hmm. And the board didn't like that at all. They like that. Uh, I said, well, why are you hiring the management company? And I said, well, first of all, it would take me four to six months to hire people and get them in here and get them trained. And by the way, who's going to train them? Because the people that had those jobs are all gone. So at least if you hire the management company for a year or two, you can have your new staffers working with them. Your management company can mm -hmm. train them mm -hmm. into how it should be run. And then you can decide if you want to leave the management company or not. But out of those four positions that those people left, um, the fee for the management company was less than three of them, their salaries, not including the benefits. Mm -hmm. So the efficiency there, I was like, well, this is a no financials, audits, that kind of thing. That was one of the, the things that we struggled with here. Do we hire a management company or do we hire a park manager. Right. And I can tell you the history in this park is that of a family. Our employees, all of our employees except for two have been here for more than 20 years. I mean, it's it's um and all the residents know them and and they're all considered family. So, uh hiring a company to come in and help us get what we needed out of this was shot down almost instantaneous. Um we want a person that's going to interact with our employees and um, build a relationship. And we want to keep- Become part of that family. And become part of this family, exactly. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of, that's going to be important to us that this person is one of the family um, as well as doing what we need to do to make this part. Well, it was interesting too, before I came to Gateway, yeah. they told me they had six, managers in five years yeah and three management companies and when i came in they decided that they were going to keep the management company for the finance and that side on the short term till we built it up um, but they hired me as the first district manager that worked for the district yeah not for the management company and that was a huge huge departure. and that that is going to that's important to us mm -hmm. um that's why we've never you know we we 
dabbled in management company for a very brief period of time. And when they wanted to come in and bring in their own staff, and we said, no, not going to happen. This, the people that work here that, that have dedicated a lot of their lives to here aren't going anywhere. And you can, um, you can enhance their abilities exactly. too. Like if you're struggling with some things that aren't, aren't efficient or you need some help on that HR payroll side, you hire paychecks. You know, there are people can clock in this way. All the resources are there. They can go online and see how much vacation time they have. And then the person that's doing the administration, so yep. your office manager, it's like, yep. oh, well, this is easy. And they're learning something new and getting it. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, so, there, there's a there's a place for consultants and outside help. And. Um, but I, I see the family thing and it's very it important. is important to us, very important to us. Um, and. Uh, the residents, um, different story, you know, dealing with them. I like to say I listen to the message, not the delivery, because sometimes they can get a little vocal and agitated. Yeah. But yeah. it's just part of it. The um, the ass assessments that residents pay at Sun and Lake are a lot less than what they pay here. Hmm. And when I look at what they're getting for amenities, um, it's, but you have income coming from other sources Surprise. that we don't have. Hmm. Um, well, it, you know, it, I mean, I, your golf course, uh, well, your restaurant certainly doesn't make any money, but your golf course does. No, it um, doesn't. No. Um, I, I, let me, I'll tell you real quick about that. The golf course doesn't pay any of its capital expenses. The cart fee that they lease yeah. 186000 a year, $204,000 for the equipment, all of that is hidden and paid for in the assessments. Oh, Golf oh, course. the golf course loses money. Yeah, it, well, yeah, most of them do. Yeah, and <laughs> yes. and the only reason it's still in existence is that six million dollars that they moved out and tapped out of that utility yeah. fund. Yeah, um, but it's not it's not self supporting fund, and they use Troon as a consultant that runs it for them. Yeah, but uh, I think the restaurant in the last couple of years lost three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, it's uh, not a money maker according to their budget. Okay. Um, Healthy looks yeah, like I you have, have a question. I have a quick question. You go by Christopher or Chris? Chris. Chris okay, Chris. Um, you mentioned that when you were went to Gateway that you heard, here's how we've always done it. <laughs> <laughs> and that I wrote that down because yeah. that's a, it's kind of a, a prevailing theme here. Um, all of us have encountered that in our trustee roles, trying to create new things, trying to soften how we do things changes. So when you hear that, um, say you're, you're hired as the park manager and you're working in the office itself, how would you help the office staff who've done things a certain way for a long time to embrace change? Well, that, that can be real difficult. Um, some people do it. Some people, you know, they aren't good at it. Some are. But really, you just need to get a buy-in. Say, okay, you're doing it like this. How is this working for you? Oh, it works, but it takes me six hours. Now, what are the problems? And you ask them, well, how would you get around this problem? Could this help you out? <clears throat> um, you know, you, you ask them, how, how can it work better for you? And maybe no one's ever even asked them that question before. Mm -hmm. but a lot of times they have ideas, and if it was up to them or someone gave them that, credit card, so to speak, to go out and make a change, um, they might, but everything's changing so fast, you can't keep doing things the way you were to go over the last 15 years. A good, a good example is your ballroom dancing. <laughs> yes. And actually, I think that's a great idea because it it's blows up in St. Pete. You mm -hmm. know, they have that old uh, building right. downtown with the wooden mm -hmm. dance floors that they redid. And blows up there. I mean, it's just resurrection, but it's no different. Hey, let's try this, mm -hmm. see if it works. But um, from the bottom up, if you don't have the buy-in from the staff to make the changes and they don't feel like they're part of it, and uh, maybe you can say, hey, if we can do this more efficiently and save a little money, it might end up in your salary at the end. Yeah. Any other questions? Good. All done. Okay. 
Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, like I, say, I usually uh, do a lot more listening. Here all day long. <laughs> Go grab a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it. And you do have a very nice community. It's very it's well maintained. And I was going to ask you this probably in the forum. What are your big problems you want to confront that you you see? It's like you, your seawall, I'm sure, isn't your only million dollar headache coming up in the next five to ten years. Not at all. It, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's kind of the way I I'm, I look at things. Is okay. We see it. How are, you know we can't solve it, but let's get it on a list and let's start taking bites out of it. Same thing. Getting the loan, the validation. And you have to be very deliberate in doing to get the best rates and get the best deal and be able to be transparent to your residents. And we don't have long-term capital project no. plans in place. We're, we're kind of which we have to start doing. Which that's, you know we're looking one or two years out, and that's, that's not that's far. a major thing we that's have to do. That's a major is, thing we need to do. Is start thinking Just about the infrastructure. Yeah, uh, exactly. the infrastructure, and even you know the past year too, because we have a large uh, equipment and tractors and mowers because of the size of the property. Um, you went to order a new one. Oh, okay, thanks. But it's 35% higher and we'll have it to you in seven months. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Excuse me? Yeah. I mean, times are changing. That's yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, thank you. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank, thank you very much. Enjoy the visit. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> and I and I did look. I know we said we were wrapping up, but it uh, Sebring's about two hours, a little shy of two hours from here. Yeah. I'll, so you're okay with relocating closer? Because okay, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right. What are we doing? Now? Okay. Uh, it's been a long day. Yes, it has. <laughs> uh, what I would like to have the trustees do is go back and review their notes and give some thought about uh, the, the applicants and what they've done, what they've said, how you best think they would apply. And I'd like to bring that back at the next board meeting uh, for either a decision to either hire somebody, uh, continue looking for a park resident, so on and so on and so on. So next workshop or next mm -hmm. board meeting? Uh, that's three, 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 three weeks. Do we want to wait that yeah, long? I was going to say, no, we've got people waiting. I keep remember that three weeks. Yeah, I, just, I don't think we want to wait that long. I, I don't either. I wouldn't, I wouldn't propose having a special meeting yeah, tomorrow. Think about this tonight. Have a special meeting tomorrow. Or How much advance notice do we have um, to have for special meetings? Special meetings is yes. There's not emergency. Emergency. Yeah. emergency. Special and emergency is different. Okay. Um, How does everybody's schedules look this week? I'm open all day tomorrow. Th Thursdays. Wednesday morning. I, like I have a doctor's appointment. Like Thursday. Thursday. Oh, let's see. I got to get back to this month. It's in the row of your golf game. Huh? I have a no. doctor's appointment tomorrow. Um, morning. And so Wednesday? Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday morning, Wednesday. I have a doctor's appointment. Wait, Wednesday I, morning, that there, there's a class in here. We have to bump them. Oh. That, that's not trustee, a problem? Trustee, yeah. I that's should right. clear the calendar for trustees. I, so, yeah, that it, it happens. And that's why we ask them to look at the calendar, you know, <laughs> the, the day of and I stuff. Know, I know. Um, and with that too, I try to contact and let people know, but sometimes I I, know, I dial the number, I get I leave a message. I don't know what they whether they get it. I got I've got a bad phone number. You know, I, I just don't have the time to to do a lot of research with that. Um, so we could do Wednesday. Is that what we're saying? I have a doctor's appointment Wednesday morning. Oh, I thought, at 10. thought you said okay, okay. Wednesday. Do we want to go Thursday morning or we want to do Wednesday Friday, afternoon? I'm open. I'm open. 
Do we want to do Wednesday afternoon or? I'm open Wednesday afternoon. Okay. So Wednesday afternoon, what's that? One o'clock or that yeah. fine? Yep. What we'll the? call a Wednesday? one o'clock Wednesday. Wednesday. Call a special meeting or emergency. Number emergency. What time again? One. One. Okay. And how long do we think it's going to last? So I know what I'm clearing off the calendar. It wouldn't be long. O open so over an hour. Or so. About an hour to discuss uh, where we want to go with the uh, next park steps? manager. Okay. And it, so, so the only topic that'll be on it is park manager. Park manager. Um, are we doing Interview public comments? Um, I'm sorry. Are we doing public comments? Yeah. Okay. So are we doing well, public comments today and then again? Uh, uh, let's see, do I have to do emergency or public comments on emergency meeting? Don't I think don't so. think I have to. I don't think you have to either. So no, it would just be the uh okay. So you'll like take care of the, you'll take yeah. care of the agenda. I'll take care of the room. Yep. Okay. So we set then at one o'clock on Wednesday. Yep, that's what I was getting. <laughs> now, that's before nice. I can adjourn the meeting, I, like I need it. resident comments. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Forgot about that. Gordon Elton, 1804, Ohio. Uh, I don't envy you your decision. I think you've got four candidates that you can actually consider this time. Uh, I think. The previous discussion about roles and duties, the, the comments that said to get input from the park manager, if you're able to hire one, is important to go through that because of the need to redefine virtually everything that the park manager does versus the trustees and, and shifting between that. So I liked what I heard as far as the discussion about how to move forward with that, you know, mm -hmm. organized. Because certainly some changes can be beneficial. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you beat them all, Gail. Race, <laughs> race. <Brace. laughs> Gail, I've been watching 15 minutes. So well. I know you're tired. I sat there and, and I'm tired too. So I just want to thank you for listening to my, uh, what I said this morning. I want to thank um, Mary for being willing to meet with me on it. Um, I want to thank you, Dwayne, for encouraging that. And I also want to tell you and the residents that, yes, I do have some new information. And I'm not saying there's an answer. I'm just saying, yes, I do have new information. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Cindy O'Brien, 1707, New York. Um, I was really impressed with the board meeting, the part that I got to see. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm coming to the training next time. But I can see from the resident, I heard three of the interviews, and I'm really impressed with where the trailer estates is going, taking a park manager. And I really think somebody who's very adamant with grants and working with the county and knowing that background sounds like it's something we really need. You know, so I appreciate all of you. I'll get to know you more. Great. Thank you. Do I have anybody on Zoom that would like to make the resident comments? Going once. Mm -hmm. They've got to unmute. Better than those. Does do I have anybody on Zoom that would like to make a resident comment? Bill said no. Hearing none. Oh, I, you, oh, I thought you wanted to say something. Okay. I adjourn the meeting at two fifty nine.